Hello and welcome to Idle Champions Presents Fury of the Black Rose. This is episode one, Ancelon, Ancelon. And dear friends, we've done a bunch of these now. This is fifth, sixth. Time has no meaning, especially uh, in the <laughs> post-pandemic times. I still haven't gotten used to the fact that we shot all those intros. And so I'm like, I need to introduce everybody. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so that means we can just get right to it. So uh, as always, thank you to the players of Idle Champions for tuning in to vote to influence the outcome of the adventure today. We acknowledge that the stakes are high, thanks in no small part to those votes. But we do ask that you please be respectful, uh, avoid backseating. Uh, there's times that things are going to be kind of high stakes and a player might do something non-optimal. Uh, there's times they might be doing something to advance the story. They may be doing something just because I asked them to do it. So a lot's happening here. Uh, please just kind of enjoy the ride. I will also say, even though the votes are public, if a person hasn't seen the votes, don't tell them yet. Don't say it in chat. Uh, I'll kind of call out over the course of the show when things are happening and we'll kind of do it organically. So if you've seen it, cool. But if you haven't seen it, no spoilers. Uh, for today's stream code is going to be Sentry Black Rose, which of course I have to recite as verbal components, which is Sent Ribli Acker Ose. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Sentry Black Rose is the code. That reward is one gold Sentry chest that will expire next Monday at 9 a.m. Uh, we have some huge, dare I say, gargantuan giveaways during the break uh, for the U.S. and Canada. We'll have a DD and d Icons of the Realm set, and uh, which is a whole bunch of great stuff that I will specify more then. Uh, and for our international giveaway, we will have Solok's Arrival Ooh. Collection, uh, which is also going to be fantastic. Uh, you'll be yeah. able to enter the drawing at the break. Okay. Uh, as always, thank you to our moderators, Jay and Jordan, for keep us uh, for keeping everything cool and everybody having a good time here. And uh, also stick around because we may have a little surprise to mention later in the show. Who can say? Um, also, you can start taking uh, start taking bets and chats right now. Who dies first? And uh, plot twist: maybe somebody's dead already. Who can say? This guy. <laughs> right. Let's Speaking of dead already, maybe only half, let us come into our story and begin meeting some of our wonderful, only slightly misunderstood heroes. Miria. The stone of the fortress Dar Guard Keep looms in the distance. As you stand in the woods, bordering the village of Lindau, your old territory that you had to keep and manage to the great glory of Lord Soth. As Miria stands in the woods alone, what does she look like? You would see her now dressed in black robes, uh, adorned with bones and armor styled uh, in undead sort of uh, imagery, skull pauldrons, uh, a high collar. Uh, from her belt hangs a silvery chain with a cage-like device with a glowing green flame on the inside of it. One of her arms she keeps sort of wrapped up in the elements of a tattered cloak, um, but the other is sort of touching various pieces of jewelry, a, 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 prom a prominent ruby necklace around her throat um, as she squints, sort of glaring almost towards the keep and then looking more sort of tentatively towards the village. She has white uh, hair, um, elven long ears. She is a silver Nastri elf, so pale of skin uh, with elven features, uh, dark eyes and ruby red lips. Uh, and uh, yeah. Miriam. As you stand there, deep in thought, a moment later, you hear a rustling in the bush, and then you hear, <coughs> and two rats fall from the air and land at your feet. And a moment later, 
Malleus flies out of the air and pounces on them both and pins them down and looks up at you and says, Mother, I've brought you something. Not now, darling. There are many other things we need to deal with. Your little hunting games, I'm afraid, need to wait. <sighs> Although, <laughs> I no longer feed as I once did. And you hear his claws kind of squeezing on the rats. I still enjoy the hunt. I know you do. I know you do. Soon, soon, little one, soon. But first we need to, I need to get into the village. Uh, scout around for me. See if any of his forces are nearby. I need to get into the church. There's something precious I need to reclaim. What does Malleus look like? Malleus would look, at a glance, Malleus almost looks like a black uh, dragonling, like a wormling of a black dragon. But it quickly becomes apparent that the skin is a little too uh, gaunt, uh, is a little too skeletal. Um, there are patches of decay and gaps in the wings and things like that. Um, and you do see kind of purple and green magic flowing through its body uh, in that kind of uh, strange sense. Um, uh, if anybody was familiar with a death dragon, they would recognize this as a death dragon. Malleus lets go of the rats and stares at them for a moment. And he's... And a purplish spectral flame begins to well up in his head that makes his eyes glow and shows between the cracks of the decay of his reptilian skin and <laughs> blows his breath out over the two rats whose eyes glow with that same purple glow and slowly start to get up again. And he says, ah, my power's returning, mother. I will be what I once was again. Perhaps, perhaps. Go on, take your pets. I need you to scout now. <laughs> yes. He sort of looks down and gestures and to him. Beats his wings and takes off for a moment. He isn't gone long. Miria, seconds really, before you feel a familiar shudder go up your spine. A presence, undeath. The ground begins to tremble with the stomping of feet of a formation heading your direction. Malleus, we need to leave now. Immediately, I'll begin making my way towards the village. I need, to, I need to get there before they arrive. You see, Malleus comes and lands again, and he says, Mother, I've witnessed her. Worsten Kern, the standard bearer. She leads his host. That wretch. Um, all right, stay low to the ground. Stay hidden. <clears throat> Ideally, we will get in without anyone seeing us, and we will leave as quickly as we can. Yes, mother. Is... If anyone spots me, you are to immediately hide. Get away from me for the time being. I want you nearby in case I need you, but if they find you, it will be a problem. Yes, as always. Good. As you all go sneaking off through the woods, you notice high in the sky, some distance away, Maria, a thundercloud that is just floating by itself. Solok, mm -hmm. elsewhere, near the town of Lindau, high overhead, Tempest is disguised as a storm cloud, as he likes to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what does Solok look like? Solok is wearing a black tunic with silver buckles and... There is a silver lining going around the edge, sleeveless on both sides, bracers on his wrists specifically to offset the bowstring as it slides down his arm and fires. But on his right side, there is what looks to be black fur of a wolf lion. The creature is seemingly unknown, but it's sewn into the shoulder of the tunic. On his back is a strange blade that has a light glint to it, and he makes sure he has a bow held in his hand almost at all times that looks like it has 
bits of blue dragon scales sewn into it. And underneath his left eye is what looks to be almost an arrow pointing downwards that he uses to focus when he pulls his bow back. You hear the thunder just sort of rumbles. It, most people wouldn't even know that it was anything in particular, but underneath it, you hear Tempest speaking to you in Draconic. I have a bad feeling about this, Solak. Something ill approaches. What does it feel like, Tempest? Death. I've had enough of that already. How mm. far is Lindau? <sighs> well, how far is Lindau for you? Or how far is Lindau for me? <sighs> how far is Lindau for us? The thundercloud begins to part, and you see Tempest as he glides to the ground, much quieter than anything his size should be capable of. What does Tempest look like? Tempest is a massive drake, more than three times Solok's size. And it's a drake with a blue underbelly and almost like a milky blue scales on the top and wings and there are horns that form almost a crown across his head and yellow eyes almost like you're looking into gold he lands and looks at you and sort of dips a wing for you to climb on and says we will be there in mere moments so I will climb on and at this point, there's probably the notion that when they've been speaking, neither of them have had to move their mouths. Let us go then. We won't let more people die. In into the night, you lift heading towards Lindau. Now, far, far, far away, an almost unimaginable distance a very different person is in a very different place sentry what does sentry look like so sentry is sort of like a humanoid figure made up of plant material so her skeleton is almost like vines and leaf material and that's covered in a sort of skeleton or like an armor made up of like stone and like heavy metal plating sort of like leaf shaped so she has these spiky almost leafy shaped pauldrons um she stands quite tall about seven feet tall um she has a long green cape around her neck with a golden fur mantle underneath it um and she has long trailing green vines instead of hair um her face is like a carved stone face plate but she has a kind gentle expression with golden glowing eyes that match a power matrix glowing the same color, this bright, or like powerful, radiant gold. Um, she carries a wooden metal shield with her hometown emblazoned, the, the sigil of her hometown emblazoned on the front. And then her weapon is a lance covered in these like ancient green eldritch runes. Sentry, as you are standing there, a familiar sensation comes over you. What does Sentry hear? Sentry, it is I, Root. I must speak with you. Okay, what, what would you like? What do you need? Commune within the Prime Matrix. There is something I must show you. Okay, so Sentry finds a, a comfy spot and she rests, sits down cross-legged on like a little grassy mound and her eyes, they don't close, they just go black. 
when you uh, rejoin the Prime Matrix entry, as you've done many times in the past, you feel the familiar presence of Root, the former bearer of the Prime Matrix, uh, the sort of originator of the Guardian species on Erois, and uh, they are waiting for you. Sentry, I have discovered something whilst I have been waiting here in the Prime Matrix. Something unusual. There is a Guardian spirit, a soul, that is no longer within our multiverse. I do not know where or how they have gone, but I feel them still connected to the Matrix, sleeping like you once did long ago. A guardian that isn't on a Rois. I do not know how it happened, but it is... Perhaps they traveled through the Well of Eternity. Perhaps they were taken there by strange magic, but they are asleep and vulnerable. I sense that their life is in danger. Of course, yeah, we need to reunite them with the rest of the Guardians. We've got to find a way to bring them back. I believe that transporting you there physically will be difficult. But with the Matrix, it may be possible to send your consciousness to their body, to take it over, to return it, find a way to bring it back to Erois through the connection of the Prime Matrix. Okay, and uh, I'll be safe if I do that? I cannot promise you that there will not be dangers. If your body, if your mind is possessing this sleeping guardian and that guardian's body is destroyed, you may lose a part of yourself when you return to Erois. But I cannot say for certain. Well, I, I can't just let this lost guardian wander alone. That okay, is the I'll role. That is the duty of the Prime. Then I'll do anything to bring them back. Let's Very go get well. them. I will send your spirit through. Be careful. Thank you, Root. Till all are one. Till all are one. And then, yeah, you uh, I'll hand it back over to Beat It. Sentry, as you feel your awareness slipping away, you feel something that you don't expect cold, soul numbing cold. But as for what happens to Sentry, we will find out in a moment. Because meanwhile, Universe is away. Aboard the Light Fantastic, a flying fish ship spell jammer, a group of sailors. Sailors, not pirates. Sailors, maybe privateers. You know, everybody's got to earn a living. We find ourselves in the mess hall as... The crew of the Light Fantastic has been joined by two strangers. Uh, first, what does Rust look like? So <clears throat> the long and short of it is uh, a cat dressed like a pirate. But uh, <laughs> to give you it in a, a little bit more detail, Rust on the harbor is uh, a tabaxi with like a, a very like golden yellow uh, kind of coloration with kind of leopard spots. Um, but um, for the most part, he's dressed quite nattily. He sort of wears uh, trousers that end just below the knee. Uh, he's barefoot because being a tabaxi scrabbling around bare paw is, is kind of advantageous. Uh, and then there is uh, like a white shirt with uh, billowing sleeves uh, under a, a waistcoat and then a tasteful blue cravat. Um, he himself um, is festooned with blades. He looks like a knife block. He has like a rapier <laughs> on his hip and then just... Daggers, 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 absolutely everywhere. He has sort of uh, bright eyes, uh, a bushy tail. You know, he's he's very alert. Although if you looked beneath the surface for any amount of time, you would realize that there's not a lot knocking around behind those <laughs> eyes. <laughs> it's kind of just like two marbles occasionally colliding. In last but certainly not least, what's Marilyn look like? Well, one look at Meryl Wynn and you'll go, I think she might be a wood elf. Uh, she's <laughs> adorned in very rustic hunter-like clothing, a lovely swishy cloak, uh, very natural greens and browns, uh, uh, green and brown hues in her uh, armour and boots and everything that she has. She has vines and leaves uh, like inter in interwoven in her hair along with all the lovely 
uh, elven braids that you would usually find there. Um, she's got a rather fancy looking bow with her, um, a trusty short sword that she doesn't use much, but she likes to have, um, as well as a few daggers hidden around for, for good measure. Um, but yeah, she, she has a little bit of fur trim on the cloak to keep her warm in colder climes. And uh, yeah, she doesn't always look like this though, because uh, she quite often on this trip anyway, um, has been turning into a small uh, wild cat and has been chasing the rats around the ship and having a great time. I find it undignified. <laughs> <laughs> As you all are sitting there in the mess hall, you see uh, a, a few of the members of the crew are there eating as well uh, that you, you've come to get to know. Um, Ian Roris is sitting there kind of staring deeply into his cup. And he's like, I told the captain I'm getting too old for this, but she keeps convincing me to sign on for one more. I'm telling you, this is going to be the last one, especially if you two work out. You know, the last time we were on one of these things, there was dragons and hearts and monsters. And, and, and then you see a very large, friendly gif. Uh, named Alred, who walks up and kind of sits down with a plate and he goes, blah, 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 my friend, yeah, the adventures is all part of it, you know? It's a, as my sainted mom always used to say, a person eats a meal, they feed the body. A person eats two meals. <laughs> well, that's a buffet. <laughs> it just starts happily eating. <laughs> and he just looks at him and is like, what? Uh, oh, anyway, it, okay. Tell it. Tell us a little bit more about the the two of you here. Um, it, it, like um, now, Mister Cat. Uh, <clears throat> in our line of work, we try to never look too much the part of a pirate. Well, respectable. You see how well groomed I am, sir. You look just like um. Well, you look like you're here to rob the police. Well, I I was a pirate. Um, it's true. I I uh, grew up in uh, Salt Marsh. Uh, but then I left the life behind me because I hate the sea. It is very wet. <laughs> and I thought, if I take one more dip, I'm, I cannot. And then, um, obviously, uh, on a Spelljammer ship, uh, space is not so wet. Uh, and also, I mean, I imagine it is the same for you. The weight is well, so fabulous. Um, I simply could not turn down their offer. I mean, one, one gold piece. Oh, such riches. <laughs> You see uh, Darkassen, which is a young dwarf. His beard has barely come in, and it's all patchy, but his eyes are ringed with red because he's very nervous all the time. And he looks at you, Meryl, and he's like, oh, uh, that, 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 uh, that, that guy said he was, he was a pirate, though. And does that mean you were a pirate, too? Oh no, no! I, I, yeah, I've been out at sea. I've been on many adventures at sea with some friends of mine, but I'm, I'm a, you know, a, an elf of the land, an elf of the wood forest. So yeah, no, no, I, I was just a, a simple hunter. That was, that was me. I would just go around, get what I needed for my, for my home, for my town, and yeah, that was it. I, you know, I, I may have run in circles with pirates, um, and run around circles around pirates, <laughs> but uh, they're, they're not that much to fear. <laughs> circles around pirates. That's very, that's very jovial. Quite a pair you are. Is someone avoiding water and space, and someone looking for trees in a place where there won't be any? <laughs> and he just starts shuffling food into his mouth. And you see, uh, the you know, Norris leans in, and he's like, I, "I'm, I'm sorry, my good tobacco. Did you, did you just say you did this gig for one gold piece?" Of course. <laughs> On purpose? Uh, yes. I mean, it is everything my heart could possibly desire. One gold piece. It's you, all I want. Captain Carstairs, who is a middle-aged woman who always looks very flustered and disheveled but you all have been on here long enough to know she actually knows what she's doing you kind of can't listen to what she says she has no real internal filter she just sort of walks over and puts her hands on on your back rust and she goes hey whoa, okay all right uh we know we don't discuss compensation uh that's uh, rust and i have arrived at a very fair 
deal that we have. he and I are extremely happy with. And isn't we that have. what actually matters? And, and Meryl, when this ship has never been so clean and free from rats, uh, some of those rats were cargo. Going to have to explain that when we arrive. The things in the cages, please don't eat. The things outside the cages, maybe don't eat. But it, you understand? Maybe check with me first. Maybe just, like bring it in your mouth before. You put it in. Sorry, when when I when I go like animal form, when I when a wild shape, I kind of just I go real wild shape. I'm a real method wild shaper. So, <laughs> so reductive. Sorry, method wild shape. <laughs> huh? But while she's sitting there talking, you see that that young dwarf goes over to uh, something kind of sitting in the corner and pulls the tarp down off of it, and you all see. Um, Rust, you and Marilyn, you've had interesting lives. Have you ever encountered Warforges before? No. Then you see what looks like a construct, possibly a, a mechanical person. Uh, it is very clearly old and worn. It's sort of gray. There's just hollow black sockets where eyes would be. Uh, it is covered in plates of armor that have been dented and scratched, but it's just sort of sitting there looking downward. And the dwarf just goes, Bwah, what is that? <laughs> and the captain is like, oh, get, okay, hang on a second. Um, so listen, it's not human trafficking if it's not human. And look, it's not even awake. Look, and she just sort of puts her hand on the top of it and sort of shakes it. She's like, it's, it's fine. This, look, we're getting paid very well to bring this thing to some people who are probably going to bring it back to life for good reasons, I guess. And then, and then I can pay all of you many coins. I don't Isn't understand. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm with the tabaxi here. I don't understand either. Uh, meanwhile... Sentry, you find yourself in a place of total darkness. It is simultaneously crushing and oppressing and yet absolutely void. And you hear a voice. <laughs> I know. You? Why do I know you? I don't know you. I don't think. Who, who are you? When you say that, in front of you, a being just manifests. It looks like a child. Very androgynous. Maybe ten years old with just long, stringy hair and tattered clothes and absolutely jet black eyes. I'm Hadar. No. No, you're not. No. This is wrong. Root told me it was safe. Root. <gasps> Root. Sentry. Sentry that raises her shield and her lance. Get back! Get away from me! You see the child just sort of like kneels down kind of on its haunches and kind of puts its hands like it's thinking clearly. And it's like, where are you going, Sentry? This isn't where you should be. This isn't how you are here. I know this soul. I broke this soul, and yet you stand before me. How? Where? What are you doing, Sentry? Get away from me! Get back! You don't... I'm not going to tell you anything. Oh, I think you've already told me everything, Sentry. Hmm. Guardian soul asleep. Mm. Would you like to know what's coming, Sentry? I will share it with you if you like. No, I, t 
No, if it's anything to do with you, no. <sighs> how, am I, how can I trust you in anything you, you say? I'm many things, Sentry, but I don't lie. I only speak truths that you refuse to accept. <laughs> the only thing you are is death and carnage and destruction. Yes, yes, you understand. You understand, and yet you resist. All will come to know the love of Hadar. And when they say that, you see long black tentacles begin forming all around them. I recently had a setback. Do you know the name Tiamat? No. <sighs> <laughs> to see her face when she hears I had her she escaped a hero one like you one like those you love stood before me <laughs> I broke one of them too Sentry would you be willing to do me a favor? Oh. <laughs> That's a good noise. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> for those who don't know, this is a big deal. <laughs> this is a big deal for Sentry. <laughs> Hadar is our big bad. <laughs> I, I will say anything for you. I will say, Sentry, it's it's different somehow. You you've encountered your Hadar, this Hadar. It's different, and yet somehow it's the same. Mm. It is like the the light shining through a prism through a slightly different angle. You don't know this face, and yet the essence of what this is, it's them. Yeah. I will not help you. Hmm. You may yet be of use. And when the time comes, Sentry, I may help you. <clears throat> You've given me something to consider here. There are more worlds. There are more Hadars. If you can transition... Perhaps I can as well. Perhaps there is more to be consumed. You have done me a great service, Sentry, and for that I will let you live. Sentry. You feel your eyes open, and you are somewhere else. Rust, Merylwyn, that machine in the corner begins to change in front of you. Pieces start realigning. Things start growing out of it. A shield forms, a lance forms, its eyes light up, and you see the being as described as Sentry is sitting on the floor. I feel like I was, you mentioned early on in the description that there were like uh, claw marks in there. I was not able to think about anything else other than scratching post. So I feel like <laughs> worse. It's just like, oh, no. Sentry, that is what you wake up to a tabaxi <laughs> sharpening their claws on your armor right in front of you as your eyes open in this strange place. <gasps> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? Who are you? Uh, well, I'm Rust on Zahaba. Hello. Hi, hi, I'm I'm Marilyn. Hit this, 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 this is the crew. Everyone on the crew, say hi. Uh, welcome aboard. Uh, I'm I'm the captain, Carstairs. I was assured that you weren't alive, or I would be violating a number of moral and legal statutes. Well, I'm here. I don't know where here is, and I'm very much alive. Where is here? What is this? Uh, you're the the light. Fantastic. It's a uh... It's it's a boat in space, basically. Yeah. Space. 
Again. Okay. 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 Where are where are we going? Um okay, this is fantastic. Um first of all, uh, okay, hang on. Do you eat? You have a mouth. I don't Sen I can Sentry doesn't rely on food. She doesn't need to eat, but she can eat just for like can... the taste. Like if she wants, she likes she likes really sweet foods, really like spicy foods, quite strong flavors. But she doesn't need to eat. Ah, oh, yeah. See, anyone who enjoys a spicy pint has got to be a friend of mine. Here, and he <laughs> hands you a pint of this bubbling reddish liquid. He's like, mmm, yes, down the house. It um, okay. it is kind of it is made from tomatoes and fish. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, Sentry has a little sip of it. Mm, uh, see, if, if it's mm. capable of enjoying a pint, then it can't be all bad. Yes, look at this. It, it, there's an interesting um, heraldry here. Not familiar with this town. Uh, we're far traveled. What, what is the name of this place engraved on your shield, ma'am? Uh, this is this is Solvin. This is my home. I ain't never heard of no place called Solvin. Where it's, is um, that? Have you heard of Erois? Huh? Right as they all look at each other, from the deck above, the frantic ringing of the ship's bell sounds out. And at the same time, the light fantastic lurches and shudders as it decelerates. Something is dropping you unexpectedly out of wild space, and the ship is not happy about it. As you all turn and look out of one of the portholes on the side, you can see a chaotic storm roiling. Multicolored energy surrounds the ship, threaded through with silver to mark the power of the astral sea. Ah, uh, that's a dimensional storm, the captain shouts. Uh, drop sails, batten down the hatches. Um, all of you who are here currently, give me perception checks, please. Alrighty. <laughs> Wow, you know, you know what's great? I have a plus thirteen, but like y'all, y'all are killing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just way off in the distance. So Locke's like, "What? That's yep. crazy." <laughs> yeah, I have a plus fifteen. So All right, oh, already oh, 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 oh. very good. Well, I have a Don't dragon, so. <laughs> all right, I got a dragon. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Uh, what What did you all get there? A twenty-eight from me. Twenty-eight. Oh, wow. 19 from me. 19. <laughs> I'm a side town sentry. <laughs> Stop it. You be nice. Uh, uh, we are guests here. <laughs> is you all look out the porthole. You look out just in time to see uh, the ship coming out of wild space. It, when you are traveling, everything is multicolored streaks as the ship is traveling incomprehensibly quickly. As it begins to slow down here, you see the spackling of stars that you would expect to see in the night sky and also colorful nebulas and celestial bodies floating through space. You also see on occasion what looks like the wreckage of what were once incomprehensibly large crystal spheres that would have been big enough to encapsulate whole planets and solar systems, but now they float shattered in pieces. And you also see a dark scar begins to tear through the web of brilliant energy. Something plunges directly in front of the ship and <laughs> the speakers on board the ship all come to life at once as a terrible voice rings out. What is the meaning of this? Why are you in the path of the almighty Xenathar? Oh, come on, you didn't even indicate. <laughs> <laughs> you all see what looks like a stone goldfish with tentacles coming out of its head and one large central eye comes tearing out of this rip in space. The almighty Xanathar does not need to indicate all others must yield the right away to him. I have christened the Silgar. I am out for a stroll and you have impeded my motions. Explain yourselves. Uh, 
Mm? I just got here. Yes, yes. <laughs> but that is no excuse. Are you, you just arrived and you are the one that is steering this contraption, this pitiful, <laughs> inferior fish looking vessel? I, I, I don't have steering. Who's steering? Who's the captain? Mm. Mm. Carstairs is like, well, it's kind of on autopilot when we're in well, um, excuse me, I think <laughs> there's just got to be a misunderstanding here. And it's like, there is no misunderstanding. You will yield to the almighty Zeta Tar! And you see his ship turns and smashes into the side of the light fantastic. And you all hear <laughs> as it rakes along the side of it. And he goes, mm, yes, yes, even your side paneling is inferior compared to the almighty Xanathar. Yep. Uh, okay. The ship lurches and a thunderous crack sounds as the gravity plane and the light fantastic ship, uh, of the gravity plane of both ships crash into each other, energized by the storm. And the ship begins to spin as the Silgar lurches away from it. And he goes, man, yes, exactly. And wherever you go, wherever you crash land, I hope that everyone will tell that you got to experience the glory of the almighty Xanathar. And I see you again, I will destroy you in person. Hmm. And <laughs> as the ship begins to twist and spin, you are going down. The ship oh. is spinning and shaking. It sails torn by astral winds, I have to say. For the record, the vote was that you all would be involved in a collision and you would be involved in the collision uh, with an eye tyrant ship. And there is only <laughs> one eye tyrant that I could have on a ship. And it's your <laughs> friend and mine, the almighty Thinita. <laughs> um, as the ship is spinning, shaking, its sails torn by astral winds. Within the roiling storm, shadows begin to shimmer and then flare. Images are seen with those shadows, glimpses of rocky asteroids, astral domains, and worlds hanging in the astral void. Um, do any of you have the arcana skill by chance? Oh man, imagine if you had somebody with a plus 15 to a con. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I do not. Off in the you. distance, Miria's <laughs> like, I know what's <laughs> happening. I would be useful. Don't don't everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of monster would separate you from the skilled people before everything went wrong? Uh, it's e after a moment, you see the the captain does run out of the room uh, towards the helm, and you hear her voice comes over the speakers. Uh, we can't hold course. We're being drawn back through wild space. And with a sickening lurch, the light fantastic is swallowed by shadow. A long moment of silvery nothingness follows. Then a bright sky suddenly opens up above you with a broad vista of green and brown below. The ship has been drawn through the dimensional storm and from an un over to an unknown world, hanging in a cloud streak sky above forests and mountains and heading for the ground at speed. Uh, what are your passive perception scores? Usually I hate passive perception, but this is worth noting. Uh, for those of you that are here presently, what are your passives? Uh, 20. Mm -hmm. 25. 12. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn, um, even though this is about as far removed from your natural habitat as you can be. Uh, you are nothing if not perceptive. Uh, you notice that even as the ship spins, the same views of earth and clouds flip past you with some, something hanging against those clouds and getting closer each time. Three winged armored figures are descending towards you, shrieking as they drive into attack. Um, I'm going to get you three to roll initiative. Ooh, okay, let's go. I don't want to be there no more. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Ugh, that is the robust twelve from me. Twelve. All right, mm. hang on. Actually, give me one second. I I have That's a right. million things open, and I'm still I'm missing one last thing. The life Got of the it. DM: twelve mm. million windows open at once. Yep, and I needed twelve million and one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, this doesn't want to cooperate. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, uh, that was a 12 from Rust. Uh, Marilyn? Yes, sorry. Uh, 17. 17 and Sentry. I got the same 17. Whee! Perfect. Uh, who's got the higher decks between the two of you? Uh, I'm tw 20. I'm 10. 
<laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, was that Sentry with the 20? Sorry, I was looking away. That was me, me with the 20, oh. sorry. Wait, the Druid's got a 20? You're like, half the time you don't even need your own decks. <laughs> Welcome to Occidental <laughs> Caracas. <laughs> 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 I was waiting for that. <laughs> yep. I, yep. Just, I just appreciate that you were like, I got a 20 as a dump stat. <laughs> yeah. I'm that yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, well, uh, technically, you all were act simultaneously. If one of you wants to go before the other, that is fine. Otherwise, Meryl Wynn is a little faster than Sentry, apparently. And by a little <laughs> faster, I mean literally double. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Uh, as you all... Um, See the, at the window as the ship is hurtling downward. You see these three what look like red humanoids. Uh, again, you all have had interesting lives. Um, have any of you you've encountered Dragonborn before? I assume. Oh yeah, I've got very mm -hmm. good friends with the Dragonborn. Well, these Dragonborn have wings, which Dragonborn don't usually have red winged dragonborns that are flying down towards you and they clearly mean to attack so hold on let me get hit there see they got a big old eight so while Jeez. they are clearly um presenting weapons you all will act first so Marilyn, what would you like to do they are clearly aggressive um i would like to uh throw an ice knife their way um and I would like to shoot it out of a fourth level slot, I think. Perfect. Um, is that a roll for you or a save from them? Let's double check. I've, this is this is a brand new spell. Hmm. Uh, so attacks slash save dex 18. Uh, so... They got a big old six. So they did Woo! not make the save. Okay, so let's cast that. Oop. Hang on, I've got to double check. No problem. Sorry, this, this is the first it's, time I'm casting this one. It's all very it's, exciting. A, a, a lot's happening. It's going to happen to all of us. Yeah. Okay, so I rolled 1d10. That's a 10. Okay. Um, and then... Da, 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 da. High levels when you cast a spell using cell, the cold damage increases by one d6 for each slot level above first. So let's roll some d6s. Uh, so da, 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 that's 10 plus. Da, 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 oh. Fourth level higher. Sorry, double check. So, yep, yeah, one d6. Okay. No problem at all. Take your time. Plus three, so ten plus three, thirteen, fourteen. So that is a seventeen altogether. Damage 17. their way. Perfect. All right. Let me just double check something here myself. Uh, I think I've got. Or do I? Do I have to make make a ranged spell attack against the target? On a hit, the target takes one d10 piercing damage. And then hit or miss, the shard then explodes. Um, the target and each creature within five feet of it must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 2d6 cold damage as well. Ah, okay. Oh, well, make your attack roll then. I will make my attack roll. Let's see if they even mm -hmm. have to worry about failing that roll. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is an eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, it's hit or miss, it explodes. Hit or miss, it, it explodes. Yeah, it still explodes regardless. You hurdle this knife out, Marilyn, and the ship is rotating and all hell's breaking loose here mm -hmm. as you throw. And the knife goes whizzing past this uh, draconian's head, and it turns and looks at you and just says, pathetic. <laughs> and the knife blows up <laughs> uh, right behind him there. So how many points of damage was that? So that was seven. Seven takes. points. Perfect. Sentry, uh, it is your turn. Alrighty. Um, Sentry is going to uh, step forward and she's going to bonus action activate Starbreaker. Ooh. Um, so as a bonus action, she raises the lance in the air and calls out Starbreaker and it doubles in size, um, which gives Sentry an extra D12 of damage on weapon attacks and the damage is force damage instead of piercing. Perfect. Um, you see... Um... 
Yonoris looks at you and is like, uh, how many coins would it take to get you to join the crew, ma'am? <laughs> I'm already part of a crew, sorry. <laughs> 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 Although I'd love to join you all when this is all over, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah, they are, they are flying closer to the ship. So what would you like to do? Okay, You've activated I've... Starbreaker. Starbreaker's ready to go. I'm going to do a level one bless. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to bless Rust and Merylwyn and myself and give us nice. a D4 to attack and saving throw rolls. Perfect. Uh, what does your bless look like when you cast it? So Sentry, a lot of her magic comes from the golden matrix that's inside her. So when she casts a spell like this, like this tendrils of like radiant golden light emanate from her chest and they reach out and they touch rust merylwyn imbuing them with that same sort of radiant energy that comes from her matrix That's awesome. it does feel good rest nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just under uh, the chin <laughs> a, a blessed a blessed chin scratch there exactly uh, any, anything else from sentry um that's it she's going to take a defensive position and just get ready perfect uh rust it is your turn um i shall draw my rapier and at, at this point having seen this rust is probably a bit like like it doesn't look like much because it is just a rapier but um, <laughs> uh i'm then just gonna hide <laughs> perfect um do you want to hold your action for like when they when they get closer you're just yes, getting ready please. to jump somebody perfect no I, yeah if i could hold my action that would be lovely I absolutely will let you hold your action because uh, they do come flying closer. And you see where the Xanathar's ship uh, has burst into yours. It has smashed a hole in the wall, which now wind is blowing and things are getting sucked out. And you see these three red would-be dragonborn land. And they're all holding two swords here, one of which is uh, uh, for the ice knife. Does the explosion hit, hits all targets or just one? uh all targets actually yeah it's just like a little they all kind of have ice on them here as they're landing and the ship is kind of still spinning and rest uh you could take your action now as they land like ah! uh i would like to stab one of them in the tummy <laughs> <laughs> go the ahead. Tummy, please <laughs> yeah, go ahead and, and, and make your attack okay that is an 18 total. yes Mm. with the d4 uh, oh i forgot about the d4 thank you very much that all counts <laughs> tell me off if you get sick of me pointing that stuff out but no no I'm no uh, 21 <laughs> more than enough yep okie dokie uh i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna roll a sneak attack damage digitally because it will just be quicker that's, <laughs> that's how it goes mm -hmm. sneak attack that is 27 points of damage. Oh my God. Uh, you see... <laughs> it sort of looks down and the other two draconians just kind of look at you like, what? <laughs> um, he is very much uh, grievously injured, but not quite down yet. Um they are going to attempt to attack back they're going to try uh rust what uh -huh. is what is your armor class 15. all right um you see he slashes with two of his swords which you easily uh dodge out of the way of but whips around with his tail and catches mm -hmm. you right in the chest rust wow. uh, give me a strength save please okay uh, let's see let's, uh 11. he hits you for eight points of damage and you all see rust goes flying and is knocked prone in um am i okay to uncanny dodge that so it's just four yeah absolutely okay uh do any of you speak draconic by any chance 
any of you that are there. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I right, you don't have to say that part anymore. Yeah. Like, we get it. We get it, B Gabe. I mean, maybe I'm just, look good. We get maybe it. I'm just looking at Solok and Marius sheet, just calling out things I know the rest of you yeah. can't do. I'm looking at my sheet right now, and I'm like, yo, if only I was just a little bit <laughs> yeah. uh, you see, This thing looks at you, and it's clearly saying something, but it just sounds like, and you have no idea what it means, but probably some unkind things about your mother, Rust. Yes, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, one is going, Merylwen, what is oof. you know what I don't even need to know your AC Merylwen because he rolled two ones and a two oh <laughs> so, he, he looks at you for a moment and it's almost like it's almost like he doesn't know what you are Merylwen is like <laughs> very, very <laughs> hesitant <laughs> coming towards you there. You haven't even wild shaped yet. And, <laughs> and the last one is even less effective, having rolled a four, a nine, and an eight. I got to get all these like bad rolls out of my system uh, <laughs> here early. Sentry, slightly different. This one runs in bravely attacks you, but the blades just clang off your shields. Clang, clang. Whips the tail around and like hits you in the leg and then pulls its tail back like it hurt. And then just kind of stands there and you can see the three of them are looking at each other, clearly realizing they've made a mistake. But that brings us back to the top of Meryl when it is your turn. Mm-hmm. Um... Well, you know what? I that the one's scared of me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it and be like do the kind of spooky druid stuff. Um <laughs> I would like to cast um infestation at them. Uh yes. just a bunch of bugs. Gross. <laughs> nice. So good. Uh that is a save for him, correct? Uh yes, I believe so. Z uh and now I roll a six. Now, again, friends, those of you that have been with us on this journey from the beginning know that I roll shockingly hot most of the time. And yet there's something about <laughs> fate has blessed these newcomers Yay. that I can't get out of the single digits on any roll here. <laughs> uh, I literally have rolled under 10 on everything so far. Uh, he very much fails the save, Marilyn. Uh, what what happens? Uh, so they will take... Uh... Actually, four d six, no, three d six poison damage. Uh, Perfect. So let's uh, roll that. That is twelve altogether. And is that a single target, or they all take this? Um, I think uh, one creature, so one target. Perfect. So just the one. Um, Meryl, when you see is these bugs answer your magic and appear and begin biting and stinging this thing you don't recognize these bugs like i mean you're aware i mean those are spiders and creepy crawlies but i mean they're you've never seen these bugs before ever uh this draconian just starts screaming and patting at his armor and just like tumbles over backwards out of the ship like as he's trying to get these things off of them. And you see the other two turn and look where he went and then look back at you all, clearly considering doing the same thing. Uh, but Sentry, it is your turn. Actually, anything else for Marilyn? Uh, no, not for the moment. I'm good. I'm just keeping an eye on all these new bugs. <laughs> going, Perfect. What the heck are those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, odd colors. Uh, you know, again, it's just like, that's not, no, that species. Uh, but, but Sentry, it is your turn. Alrighty, I'd like to make two attacks against these things, please. Have at it. Let's go. Uh, seven plus twelve, nineteen to hit the first one. Uh, and you rolled your bless as well, didn't you? I was gonna say, yeah. Oh yeah, ah. my own bless. Ah, thank you for remembering. Mm -hmm. That's the another blesser four. is also the blessy. More than enough for the record. Nice, awesome. So I'm gonna do a level one divine smite, and with Starbreaker active as well. Mm -hmm. Let's. 2d8, 3d8, and 2d12. Plus your mod. Yeah. As as one does. Nice. So let's see. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 25, 29, 32 damage for the first hit. 
<laughs> the first bit. Sentry's a killer in in High Rollers, by the way. Like this uh-huh. is she is she is a, a beast, a machine. Uh, you <laughs> just like looking at her bugs, going, "Oh, <laughs> I'm trying, mother." <laughs> Too strong for mother, Clarence. <laughs> Smash into this thing, like shearing off a part of his armor and like scorching his scaly flesh underneath it. And you see, he sort of stumbles backwards for a second, but stands up and just looks at you defiantly and continues saying something in a language that you don't understand. But based on how he's sneering and frothing at the mouth while he's saying it, it's probably not positive words. Hmm. I'm going to hit him again. <laughs> 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 so proud. <laughs> nice. 14. Violence isn't the answer. Violence is the question. The answer is yes. 27? Uh, more than enough. Nice. All right. I'll do the same again. Level okay. one divine smite. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Yep. <laughs> 15, 20, 22. I rolled another one. What the hell? <laughs> it's saving up for me and Gabe. That's what it is. DJ. <laughs> They're saying, oh, I'm going to be nice to the newcomers. <laughs> don't pull me in. They're going to get me like, don't me. 20. Don't pull and me in. Additionally, this. another yeah. 20. <laughs> no, this, is God, this is God's honest the truth. I usually roll so hot, I regularly get accused of cheating. And I'm like, it's just the dice. That's but I mean, dice, no, nobody doesn't believe me when I roll six ones. That's weird, right? You know, they're like, no, of course, <laughs> that happened. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. How mm-hmm. much <laughs> damage was that century? Now you're good. 38 for that one. <laughs> century, as you see this thing stands there hissing defiantly, you tell me what it looks like when you remove it off this mortal plane of existence. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sentry pulls the lance back, and the green eldritch energy spiraling around it coalesces and merges with her own ra- radiant energy. So it's like this. This like helix of green and golden energy, and she slams it through this creature's chest, and that same energy bursts through it, and I, I, I guess it just disintegrates into like green and gold light, and just flickers away. When this happens, there's almost, even though there's the howling of the wind of the ship being ruptured here, there's almost like a moment of silence. And that little dwarf Darkassian pokes his head from behind the table where he's been hiding, just kind of holding a knife in a trembling hand. And he says, uh, uh, excuse me, it did, it did, uh, I don't even know that I got your name, but I did want to formally propose marriage. Uh, my, my prospects <laughs> might be meager, but I assure you, I would be good and loyal to you uh, and all things. I said, wow. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I realise we're, we're we're heading towards uh, the ground at a rapid rate. Um, is there anything I can do? Anything I can help with? Uh, well, well, there's a third one of those things. Um, rust. <laughs> there is <laughs> one more that you have already injured. That is sort of like holding the wound with one hand and looking to what happened to his compatriots. Uh, uh-huh. You get the distinct impression he's going to try and run if he can, but you don't necessarily have to let him. That's up to you. Okie dokie. Um, <laughs> would you get the... <clears throat> would just, just out of curiosity, would you say that he's within five foot of anyone else in the party? I'd say he's within five foot of everyone else in the party, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, then I'm probably just going to sneak attack him. <laughs> As one does, yes. Mm-hmm. So, whoop. Try and roll it on the table, Johnny. There's a good fellow. Uh, that'd be thirsty. Does uh, Bless get used up the once, or does it? No, it's every uh, time. Wow. That's why That's amazing. Bless, Bless is obscene. It's a small bonus, but it recurs so many times that it's, it's got... It's incredible to see a paladin doing paladin things. <laughs> well, like, I know, This right? is a first for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's shitty. Sorry about it, Mike Channel. Um, <laughs> that is a 24 from me. More than enough. Great. So let's roll that damage. That is at 28. Uh, same thing, Rust, is you see this draconian is very much reconsidering its life choices here and watching yep. an impromptu proposal over the still warm corpse of its associate. <laughs> you tell me what it looks like when Rust dispatches this thing. Okay, so sort of imagine the first was like, a, you know, like a fine thrust. And then <laughs> sort of we were both a little bit surprised by what just what was going on this is a, a nonsense fight to be having we're on a ship that's going down so russ kind of pulled the blade out and then 
just sort of we saw an impromptu proposal and they just sort of popped it back in again <laughs> just like, just like, uh, whoop. So, like exactly the same uh, and this time just like zip and it's kind of like a, i guess his reaction is more like an oh there we go <laughs> that's what i was expecting the first time around all right you see its body slides to the ground and slides across the floor and is pulled out the window as the ship is continuing to crash. Uh, meanwhile, while all of this is happening, you all hear the captain's voice comes over the intercom again. Um, hang on. Moving around too many places. The captain comes and says, okay, uh, Good news, bad news. Uh, this is going to be a rough landing one way or another. Probably going to live, like mostly. And hey, uh, also, if we don't live, would you even know? Um, but listen, in the meantime, everybody um, secure something. Uh, secure the emergency supplies. Uh, if the sh secure the cargo. If the ship breaks up, we will lose everything. So, Johnny, or sorry, Rust, Sentry mm -hmm. and Merylwyn, uh, you all have uh, a couple of options. You can do one of um, one of three things. You can either try and collect the rations, so you'll have some food to eat wherever it is you're about to go. Uh, you can uh, grab survival gear, which will help you once you're on the ground, or you can secure the cargo, uh, which are, um, the cargo's pretty interesting. But yes, it is up to up to each of you what you would like to do. Um, I feel like Rust. I mean, Rust is being paid a lot to be here, <laughs> so his first priority is uh, the integrity of of the job. So I think Rust would probably try and secure the cargo. Rust is going to secure the cargo. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, to be clear, uh, the way this is going to work, multiple ones of you can do multiple things. It's not necessarily like the other two of you have to do rations or survival gear. Just pending what you choose is going to affect some stuff that is going to happen later. So, you know, take that as ominously as I meant it. So, <laughs> uh, Rust is going for the cargo. Uh, Sentry, and, uh, Sentry, what would you like to go for? Um... I think Sentry Sentry knows what food is, and she knows that people need it to live, even though she doesn't need it. But I think she would want people to survive. That would be <laughs> that would be of her interest. So she, as a big mama bear, warforged robot lady, so she's gonna get. Yeah. Look after the food. I appreciate you just described my DMing style. It's like, I want you to survive. That would be to my interest. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Hang on. That's it. Uh, perfect. You are going to go after the rations. Okay. Um, yeah. Merylwyn, uh, so far, no one's going after survival gear, but you also could go after rations or securing the cargo if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think I'm going to um, maybe help Rust with the cargo because I think Merylwyn thinks I'll be able to survive and gather wh wherever I end up because you know that's what she's grown up doing so um I think yeah she's gonna help rust with the cargo a little bit because I think hopefully keep the whole integrity of the ship a little bit better I don't know <sighs> Perfect. Uh, well, let's start with Sentry here. Uh, Sentry, uh, you can easily follow the crew to the to the hold where all the provisions are. It's like everybody's kind of gone into gone into action doing their thing here. Um, as you run into the room, give me a deck save, please. Oh, <laughs> all righty. You found Sentry's one weakness: <laughs> <laughs> agility and movement. A giant 14. <laughs> uh, Sentry, the moment that you come into the room, just a giant kettle that has come unmoored just <laughs> smashes into your head uh, for four points of damage. Oh. Uh, and as the pots and pans and knives are flying around in here, this is actually an incredibly dangerous place. Uh, <laughs> give me an acrobatics check. Oh. <laughs> An eight. <laughs> Sentry 
I mean, you really try your best, uh, honestly. Do. As things yeah. are flying <laughs> around, trying to grab them, it's just everything is. <laughs> this is not to your. This does not play to your strengths whatsoever. Here, as you oh. are attempting. Sentry to likes ground that isn't moving quite as. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> violently. Yeah, You're probably it's trying terrible. to save those plates as well, Sentry. You're like, save the warm plates. You gotta yeah. save the warm plates. Yeah. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, uh, Rust in Merylwyn, um mm -hmm. is you all. Hang on, let me just check one quick thing here. Sorry. Uh, is oh okay. Oh, that was weird. Um, is you all come into um the hold here you see um there are cages filled with these um strange birds uh they are they have red eyes and razor sharp teeth uh and they just look like really terrible geese like geese that might be from the abyss actually and there's also tanks. Uh, there's actually Merylwyn. Roll mm -hmm. 1d4 for me, if you would. Okay. <laughs> There's Schrodinger's tanks right now. Four. Four tanks. <laughs> of what looks like a thick grayish black oil. But you notice one of them is laying on its side shattered. And there looks like there is uh, a pool of it all over the floor. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what would you all like to do? Um. <laughs> I, I'd like to have a, like a, a closer look at like the pool of stuff on the floor and just like try and assert what it is uh <laughs> all right hold on <laughs> pay no attention up. to how many dice i just picked up sure. yeah I, well i just want to make sure goals. you know everyone know i've got yeah, i don't accidentally set off produce flame and then you know <laughs> um what is uh Marilyn's armor class oh good oh it's 15 <laughs> As Merylwyn comes creeping forward, you sort of very carefully look at this puddle and it <laughs> comes up and wraps around Merylwyn's head. <laughs> ah! uh, or I mean... <laughs> for 28 points of acid damage. <laughs> and you see as this thing starts moving... It hurls goo that starts eating through the locks on some of the cages, and some of these geese, abyssal geese, start to get out. A um, couple things. First, uh, I need both of you to give me a strength saving throw. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that's better than what I expected from this man, so I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not over yet. It's not over. <laughs> well, I also that's love the four. <laughs> um Marilyn, somehow as you are frantically trying to extricate yourself from this thing that is holding on to your head now you manage to dodge the geese flying around here uh i'm just flailing so much it's just, they can't the, get, there's no is, target <laughs> exactly like there's there's nowhere for them to aim uh unfortunately for you rust they mm. are biting and clawing and scratching at you as these horrifying monster animals uh are getting out also i just like the record to show uh, we we work on these adventures with with a guy named Scott F. Gray, who's wonderful. Uh, he fit a, he actually fit a little joke in here for me. He's like, he's like the the pins are holding a flock of abyssal geese, Canada geese with glowing red eyes, razor sharp teeth, and highly toxic excrement. So really, just Canada geese. Bravo, Scott. And, uh, make sure. Go ahead, <laughs> yeah, I'm like I, I saw I saw what you did there. Um, <laughs> Rust, uh, mm -hmm. you take four points of damage from these things biting and scratch scratching and clawing. Now, 
uh, Rust, you first mm-hmm. give me a strength athletics check. Not uh, okay. I'll give you a death a- the athletics. I'm not a monster. I know you're you're more Thank dexterous than you are you. strong. However, you got to do it at disadvantage. Oh, great. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, well, it's still all right, actually. Uh, that is uh, dirty 20. That actually is enough, Rust, for you to start shoving some of these things back into the cages here as they're kind Amazing. of getting loose and able to secure them. Uh, Marilyn, uh, I will keep us basically in the same initiative that we were here with just the two of you. Um mm-hmm. Meryl, when this thing has come to life and as it's eating your face, <laughs> what would you uh-huh. like to do? <laughs> um, and apparently the tank it went in is broken. Right. Okay. So I, I would like to try and like free myself from it. Uh, <laughs> it somehow, like try and like get my, sh- pull out my short sword or something and try and like cut off like so that it'll I'm assuming it'll if like I cut that jelly. it'll let go <laughs> like a yeah, yeah yeah you cut it and it splits uh, like a jelly yeah you no know, this 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 makes total sense uh quick question that I'm asking for no particular reason just like just for fun really um mm-hmm. are is your sword magical um no is your armor magical no you start to hear a hissing and popping as the metal on your sword begins to corrode and the oh. armor you're wearing begins to corrode. Uh, and they both, your armor takes a negative one penalty. No! And your weapon <laughs> takes a negative one penalty no. as well. <laughs> but you can still make your attack roll because it's not particularly hard to hit. You just shouldn't hit it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um... Well, can I can I do something else with it, or do I need to use my sword now? Have I? Uh, oh no, said... we're past that. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh... yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. I would like I would like to hit it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and roll. Magic. Mm-hmm. Uh... Oh man, that's a. <sighs> okay, yeah, that's a nine. <laughs> uh, believe it. Or, well, believe it or not, its AC is only eight. It's not hard. Yeah! to Yeah. It's not. So, yep. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's flailing wildly, but you still manage to get it. Yes, so you do damage it, but you take that uh, negative one penalty to it um, mm-hmm. uh, as it eats through and is continuing to eat through your stuff. Uh, Rust, <sighs> actually, no. Well, even though Marilyn's pretty perceptive, she's also otherwise occupied right now. So, Rust, give me a perception check if you would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably. <laughs> Uh, that is a 22 you also notice that yes it is starting to eat through her armor but it is also starting to eat through the floor rust the metal of the light fan is like and it is like visibly beginning to sink into it as well uh rust what would you like to do uh, also Marilyn, you are free from it assuming it doesn't attack you again of course you you are able right. to get back but realize yeah. y- your possessions are starting to fall apart damn it <laughs> <laughs> um, rust what okay. would you like to do well um hmm could i use feline swiftness to get to the deck below uh is there yeah. if there is indeed a deck below sure what what is okay. what is it that you were that you were uh in intending here uh sort of going beneath and panicking um but uh <laughs> i would I, i'll be panicking honest is you, a free action yeah russ is probably <laughs> gonna try and find some kind of receptacle to sort of catch this goo in and be like, <laughs> if i if i if i put like an interstitial hole but like an interstitial <laughs> thing between that deck and that deck I'm technically buying us time. Yes. Uh, hold like on I said, second, Russ, Mary. sweet angel baby. Yeah. <laughs> not always the greatest. Well, it's like a leak. It's like a leak in a boat, right? He's just like, oh, yeah. you just got to catch the water from from the yeah. deck above. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. 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 Bucket, mm-hmm. You scoop yeah. all the water up. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Makes a hundred percent sense. Maybe um, maybe American boats are different. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Sentry, do me a favor. Yeah. Give me a perception check. Oh yes, please. What the bam? Oh dear. Uh, 
Nine. Nine? Yeah. Yeah, you have no idea that any of this is happening. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, uh, Rust, give me one more perception check. Okay. <laughs> sure, why not? Again, uh, uh, it's, uh, it, uh, it'd be a shame if I were to eliminate the people that are good at stuff before I need that stuff done. That is a 19. Uh, hey. Rust, even though Sentry doesn't see you, as you are mm -hmm. coming, it is like that scene from Inception where you're like running along the walls <laughs> here as the ship is continuing to rotate here, heading towards the Earth. Uh, a huge brown uh, cooking pot uh, with an oddly sentry face shape indention on the side of it does kind of come out uh, into the hallway as you are coming down. You would catch this and be able to... Um, one one follow-up question, Russ. Uh, at, at any point, were you going to communicate to Marilyn that that was the plan, or are you just going to do this? Oh, no. no. <laughs> I'm just right. Like... right, right. Yep. Um, yeah, so, yeah, just gonna gonna proceed with the plan i'll be honest with you rust probably recognizes sentries facing us oh hello oh. <laughs> and then really like oh never never mind then, just, just perfect gonna poodle, poodle. you get underneath you are ready you can see the ceiling is already beginning to kind of like start to bubble a little bit as uh as it is eaten through here um Merylwen, uh you realize rust is left uh, your, your, your perception's high enough that I think you also notice that it is starting to eat through the floor. Um, uh, what would you like to do? Um, I would like to try my best uh, to like cast shape water on it and try and like contain it. Like try and see if I can control the flow of it to like slosh it back into something. That is the face of a thinking DM of like, mm, that's, how that's will that's, I make it's this work? Fine. How will I and not? this? Exciting game of, is it water? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not not well, water. I mean, uh, the, it's, it's a ooze. Uh, um, it is soup. I don't recommend you eat it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, they've done everything else. <laughs> you know what? You know what? You already got your face half eaten off, um, Marilyn. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna let you have this. What 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 is your <laughs> yeah, with the with the shaping of the water here? Um, I would like to just try and uh collect it into a ball, like floating uh in the middle of the room, sort of where all the geese are like going wild. <laughs> like if ah, they just like go. go into the thing, mm -hmm. then that's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. like trying to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> Do, do you Elf want to juice. do you want to try and uh, uh, put and it back it in, in in what's left of its container, or are um, you trying to just eat up the geese? <laughs> uh, <laughs> hmm. What does Marilyn want to do? How um, how angry are the geese right now in that geese, room? Oh, they, they're, they're geese, Marilyn. They're geese. Yeah. <laughs> They, they, they're the embodiment of hatred. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what to um, do, Ellen. <laughs> 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 Marilyn's a fruit neutral and she just wants to make sure people don't get eaten. So like she's just gonna like just hold it in place and stand by the door and try and keep the geese in that room. I don't want these people in my home. Send them back. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a nickel. For the record, it was voted on by the good people of Idle Champions that there was dangerous livestock here. Uh perfect. <laughs> Uh, as you all are struggling here to do this, you find the ship's bell suddenly sounds out and the first mate, Anaka, is ringing it furiously. And he says, uh, crash land examine it. Two to three odds. We don't make it. Uh, in, any takers? Two, two to three. Two to three that we die. Uh, Captain Carstairs shouts out, belay that nonsense. I haven't failed a landing yet and I ain't starting today. Well, I mean, that was at one time, but look, there's nobody else that, that lived to talk about that. But look, that's not important right now. We'll all walk away from this probably. And that's a promise, kind of, but we need to find a soft place to sit down. Uh, as you all are coming down out the windows, even where you are, uh, Rust, you waiting for the ceiling the ceiling to give that doesn't because Marilyn has it to shape water. And Marilyn, you up there holding it in Sentry, just trying your hardest to get any of these rations, and it is not going well, Sentry. Uh, Grabbing a stick of plates, butter and it just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
it was a uh, Meryl one. You were the one with the highest passive, correct? Yes. Funny live. Y- you can see in the distance ahead, the clouds suddenly up and up to reveal a village. Beyond it, a broad clearing in the forest surrounds some sort of ruined structure, making a space potentially large enough for the light fantastic to make a rough landing. Uh, there are radios, so they can hear you if you try and talk to them. <laughs> okay. Like, folks, th- over there, that way. Let's head that way. <laughs> there looks like, there looks like, that looks like a landing spot. <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, anywhere is going to be a landing spot really soon, but uh, I'm going <laughs> to, yeah, we can do it. We probably won't destroy this village and kill these people. Like, again, 70% chance. You all see as you're coming down now out of the clouds, you're getting low enough to the ground that out through the holes of portholes of the ship and just the gaping hole ripped in the side of it, you can see a village with frantic people running uh, to look and see this flaming fish coming down out of orbit and are fleeing and screaming in terror as it is coming down. The ruin of the ship is careening moment to, and you can see a, a fallen chapel off in the distance. And with a grinding crash, the ship slams into the ground at the near edge of the clearing. Captain Carstairs bringing it down perfectly, but even with the hull tearing up dirt and rocks, the ship's momentum carries it forward straight towards the old chapel and straight through it. (gasps) A thundering crash of wood and stone echoes out, and then there is silence. Is it possible to do anything about that crashing into the chapel? Unfortunately, there isn't, sir. Spark's not that big. There's a whole, there's a whole ass spaceship. How about you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Merrill, when Sentry Rust, give me either strength or deck saves. It is up to you to see how good of a job you did, basically bracing for impact here. <laughs> oh, don't forget any Sentry. Anybody close to you gets your your bonus, don't they? As yeah. well, none of them are near Sentry. Oh, okay. They were in three different go. places. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Oh, Crit one. Crit <laughs> one. <laughs> Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Um, <clears throat> chat and producer V. <laughs> no. Producer V, I, I need your help real quick here. Chat. This is a golden opportunity because Marilyn was holding a glob of highly volatile acid <laughs> right over her head. And just rolled a one. So, do is we do some? Uh, are we? If we are going to be nice to Marilyn, put a two in chat right now. If we're going to be not nice to Marilyn, put a one in chat right now. This is going to be about a 15 second poll here. Oh. We're just, we're going to put my vote in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all remember when B Dave was like dying as hard? <laughs> yeah. But he hadn't played with any of you yet. Yeah. I leave it up to you, producer V, when you've seen enough of which way of which way you think it's going. She's too busy laughing. Producer V is just killing and giggling. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. All right, all right. Then we're gonna let fate decide, Marilyn. That's what I would like you to do. What I would like you to do. Okay. Uh, actually, actually. Mark loves chaos. I'm going to let Mark do this. Mark, yeah, sure. roll a d20 for me, please. If it's oh. even, it's good for her. If it's odd, it's bad Absolutely. for her. Absolutely. B Dave, be my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What a shame. It's odd. It's an 11. Oh, no. Marilyn. Poor Marilyn. As the ship crashes into the earth your concentration is broken and (laughs) all over you another 28 points of acid damage and another negative one to your weapon and your armor no (laughs) the ship slides and careens to a halt ow (laughs) On the ground. You know what? 
some interesting stuff's going to happen on the ground. And that's why I think this is an excellent time for us to take a little break. Let's take the break right now. Yeah. Let's take the break right now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm just cursed. I should have just let these people die. I tried to play a good guy once. And DJ's like, you know what? You know what we're going to do? That town you were going to go help? I'm going to make your friends kill him first. <laughs> you had to know the moment I named a place that you'd care about. You had to know what this was. We've been at this too long, Gabe. It's We've been, been at an this hour. Too long. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, when you've only got six episode. episodes to ruin a player character's life, that I, hour matters. <laughs> I'm not from here. I was just nice. <laughs> uh, perfect. Now, uh, again, let me make sure that I say this correct, producer V. Are we are they entering the contest during the break and we announce uh during the break during the break perfect 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 so right now during the break you can enter the giveaway for the D D icons of the realm set and the solox arrival set both of which are incredible we will announce the winners at the end of the episode uh again it's fine. Somebody's had their soul ripped across a universe and crashed a ship and Marilyn is grievously injured and they just got to the ground. Oh, I just forgot to mention those of you that failed that save, which was everybody but Russ. Did I not mention that? That's 11 points of bludgeoning damage as you are jostled. As well. In the, in, yeah, in the, in the crash. Oh, in, I, need a, I need a healer. Yeah. <laughs> I need an adult. It's, yeah. <laughs> my, Meryl, Meryl in the pre- that's all you can wild shape is fine you got like bonus yeah. hit points it's fine it's fine yeah. you're just gonna be like a, a very acid riddled mammoth walking around yeah. <laughs> like you're, you're you are the healer you're a druid <laughs> yeah. yeah true i know great I to tell you that mate yeah in this in this part you're the one that's got to do all of that <laughs> well that's, that's all right again I'm sure she's going to be fine and nothing terrible is about to happen now that you're on the ground. And then we're going to meet Marilyn, uh, Miria and Solok soon, which, again, super happy fun times and okay. nothing else that you need to worry about whatsoever. <laughs> rest, yep. rest of the episode, shopping episode. I'm going to make a new, I'm gonna make a new, new character called Tola. <laughs> he actually hates Lindau. <laughs> but... Stick around. Uh, enter the, uh, I guess, the, the instructions for how to enter are coming up in chat right now, I assume, as they always do. Uh, and we will be back in 10 minutes. Don't go nowhere. Hello, it is I, B. Dave Walters, your humble dungeon master, and my pronouns are he, him. I'm Johnny Chiodini. My pronouns are they, them. I'm playing Rust on the Harbor, he, him, a tabaxi rogue. Hi. I am Rhiannon Frost. My pronouns are she, they. I'm playing Sentry, she, and she is a guardian paladin. Hi, my name is Gabe Hicks. My pronouns are he, they, and I am playing Solak, the Kalashtar Ranger, whose pronouns are also he, they. Hi, I'm Ellen Rose. My pronouns are she, her, and I am playing Meryl Wen, whose pronouns are she, her, who is a wood elf druid. I like to turn into cats sometimes. Hi, everybody. I'm Mark Humes, also known as Sherlock Humes. Uh, he, him, she, they, whatever you want, really. I, I do everything, really, myself. Uh, and I'm going to be playing uh, Miria Elithrin, uh, who is she, her, who is a Silver Nastry elf, kind of a disguised Shadarkai elf, uh, necromancy wizard. Hello. Welcome back. Um, you know, listen, uh, I know that death is difficult in high level D and D. Uh, I didn't make any of this happen to Marilyn. The dice <laughs> made. I, 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 I am listen, B Dave. You've got a bunch servant. of DMs in here. You can't be pulling that stuff on us. We know how it works. Okay? <laughs> I mean, I, I actually kind of agree with them, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just right, a right. servant of fate and chance. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, sure. I'm just, yeah. like, I've never killed anybody. The dice have killed lots of people. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. That helps you sleep at night, dude. That's fine. Like, like a baby, Mark. I need <laughs> you to know. <laughs> just <laughs> like a baby. Yeah, yeah. same, same. Yeah. Um, uh, welcome back. Hopefully you got a chance to enter in for the drawing and the giveaway uh, that we will announce at the end of the episode. But plot twist, but wait. There's more. Uh, we are also going to be giving away a Beetle and Grim dice set, uh, the Paladin class. Does anybody have the Paladin? By the way, I do. The Ooh. Paladin dice set. There's lots of neat ones here. I've got the Bard. You know, yes, there it is. So uh, we are going. There's another drawing. A little little ASMR for you there. Um, uh, another drawing is opening up now. How to enter should be a no. It's not not opening now. At the 
10 minutes before the stream ends, we will have the drawing and we'll announce that also at the end. So there you go. Not only do you get to just witness these beautiful humans displaying their wonderful amounts of talent, you also have the opportunity <laughs> to win some swag there. So there you go. Yeah. Bonus points for uh, shape-shifting warforges and, and hapless elves getting their faces eaten off by acid. Speaking of getting their faces eaten off by acid, <laughs> let us rejoin the crew of the now-wrecked Light Fantastic. Uh, in the aftermath of the crash, the ship is wrecked and the old chapel is flattened. But the members of the crew of the Light Fantastic begin to emerge one by one, largely intact. Captain Carstairs is the last member of the crew to stagger out from the wreckage, staring at the destruction around her. Oh, poor ship. But hey, we did it. We all walk away. Like I said, haven't failed a landing yet. I mean, except that that one time. But again, I, I, that's that's not important now. Uh, we're live. Uh, is, is everybody all right? Uh, uh, I'm okay. I think. Any? Um, does anyone need any help? Help. <laughs> help. <laughs> Is you all hear Marilyn kind of call out weakly from what was the hold? All three of you give me perception checks. Okay. All righty. I got 14. 14. Uh, 26. 26. Uh, 28. 28. Uh, Merylwind, you of course see this because you're right there. As the <laughs> ship is going down, you feel this thing drawing off of you. Rust, as you're there, you notice now all four tanks are shattered and all of those oozes are gone. You also see the geese flying off into the distance in all directions. <sighs> Sentry, you do arrive to see a fairly grievously injured Marilyn <laughs> lay, <laughs> laying on the floor uh, of the hall. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll kneel down beside her and channel some of my Matrix energy into her, um, and I'll give her 20 lay on hands points of wow. healing. Wow. Ah. Thank you. Oh, that's so much better. Rust was looking for a pillow. <laughs> 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 uh, a warrior's death. Make it snap, quick, yeah. right? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, Marilyn, as you feel this healing magic start to sink in and you see this kind Warforge face sort of staring over you, a Sentry, as you kind of take the inventory, you can see where her equipment is burned and pockmarked, where acid has begun just eating through it. Oh, are you okay? It looks like some of your gear has been damaged. Um we might need to might need to find a place to get it repaired. Yeah, I probably need some new stuff anyway. It's, it's fine. But th thanks. It's it's annoying because you know I've had it for so long. I like looking after it. But hey, maybe it's an ex excuse to get some new things. I'm sure, there's lots of nice things in this village, right? <laughs> some nice buildings that we've definitely not crashed into. Oh. <laughs> is you all look across uh the the ship crashing and the stone is kicked up some some dust and soot that it's uh as you look around at the edge of the clearing again to be clear you all didn't crash in the village you came over the village and crashed very nearby into an old chapel that was in a, an adjacent clearing as you look over in the trees though you do see a group of people uh farmers in uh come see some of them have pitchforks and whatnot but they're not being particularly aggressive they're just kind of staring looking at all of this because basically a giant fish that was on fire just fell out of the sky <laughs> and crashed next to their village what would you all just, like to do just wave at them in a kind of non-aggressive way to just be like hi sorry about that you see, uh, Captain Carstairs looks at you and she's like, well, um, we should probably go meet the locals, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
she looks at you, Rust, and she says, if this turns sideways, I'll pay you an extra coin for every one of these people you stab, okay? Okay, okay? I don't okay. understand. No, I know you understand stabbing. I've watched you do it. Like a no, lot. no, I understand. I just, uh, okay, yeah, no, you, yes, I'm already being paid, yes, I understand. Do it, uh. What, what is this other coin? You know, I I wish I wish I had ten of you, buddy. That's a uh, uh, also um I didn't. <laughs> she points at you, Sentry, and she's like, I I don't know that I got your name. Oh, sorry, uh, my name's Sentry. Ah, Sentry, Captain Carstairs, Captain. Well, I mean, Captain. the ship crashed, but I mean, you, the captain's not the ship. Yeah, no, it's still Captain, still Captain Carstairs, okay. uh, Merylwyn, Rust, uh. It's uh, the others are sort of um, hopefully alive. I'll have to introduce you properly afterwards. But uh, right now, would you mind helping us with um, talking? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, of course. Pro probably not going to kill anybody. Most likely. Yeah. Okay. Not that's not plan A. I mean, hurting people is the last thing I want to do. It is on the list, though. Okay. All right. So we good. We all. Yeah, we do everything yeah. else, and we help some people. I get it. Perfect. All right. Um, and she does start kind of walking in the direction of the people, which you see as they do, a couple of them kind of step forward. And you all see a tall, broad-shouldered woman kind of steps forward in front of the group. Uh, her skin is clearly weathered from having been outside, but with deep laugh lines around her eyes, although she's not laughing currently. Uh, she's got brown hair pulled back in a ponytail, and she's got uh, kind of the, the single sleeve of what a blacksmith wears, and a heavy hammer is but hanging at her side, but it's still in the holster. And she walks forward and says... Are you? Did you just fall from the sky? Uh, technically from space, but generally speaking, yes. Uh, we have crash landed. Um, hello, my name is Rust. Uh, sorry about whatever that building was. A uh, building? And you see she leans and looks past you and you realize she couldn't see past the ship before now and she goes suddenly pale, staring at the mass of collapsed stone where the chapel once stood, spread beneath uh, the shattered hull of the ship. Oh no, you fools, you meddling fools! She turns to one of the other farmers and says, how, how close? Where did you see them? When the farmer's voice is choked off by fear, <coughs> On, on, on the road, uh, there were outriders past the old well this morning. They'll be here in minutes. Frida turns back to you, her face ashen. Oh, better you would have crashed that ship of yours into our houses, killed a few of us quick, maybe. But now you've doomed us all to torment in a lifetime of torment beyond. Uh, I, I, I mean, f firstly, I'm sorry, but also I, I don't really understand. Uh, uh, what was that that we um, crashed into? Solok. Huh? <laughs> You've been near enough to witness this all transpire. That man sitting in the trees like, who the <laughs> hell? <laughs> <laughs> How does Solok make his presence known? As you hear this tabaxi basically having no idea why this is a problem, but you understanding completely why this is a problem <laughs> so look tempest is not visible at this point so is, is he, going to is he hiding like a storm cloud or is he just somewhere completely different he's inside of my body because you can summon the drake out oh he's definitely not visible perfect yep <laughs> um so hops out of a tree and as he walks up he says der kur bathkar soth and he's asking in draconic are you servants of Soth. Merylwyn, Sentry, and Rust. Give me... Hmm, what do I want for this? Mm -hmm. Of course. None of this is working right now. Because um, like, if, if they're not afraid of what they did, 
Yeah, no, this 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 is perfect. Hang on, I just I'm just trying to figure out what what oh, I'm I not want. sure what the end of that sentence is. Let's see here. Give me history checks. I'll take uh, history. <laughs> oh, I see it. Oh, ah, centuries so other weakness, intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Minus one. No, no, not for you, Solak. B Dave, I just sent, I just sent you something. Mm. That's a uh, seven that's, from me. That's a sixteen from Marilyn. Seven from Century. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, Marilyn, <laughs> um, yeah. you don't know what he's saying, but you realize he's saying the same thing those winged dragonborn were saying. They were kind of snarling and hissing, but it's the it's the same language. It's like when when you comprehend mm. someone speaking Latin, even if you don't know what Latin is. Uh, but mm -hmm. he clearly looks nothing like them. Mm. Why are you talking like the red dragon dudes, the winged <laughs> dragonborn up there? They there were three of them. They attacked us. Please tell me you're nothing to do with them. You're alive and met three of them. Yeah. Well, that one over there. Uh, the, the, like the sentry, the, the cool spear, rust, really good at stabbing things. So, kind of, I I threw some insects at one of them. I uh, kind of helped. Solok, you do see, um, what should be an incredibly poisonous spider, just sort of idly kind of crawl on Marilyn's shoulder, like like it's not. No 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 no. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yes, right, yeah, yeah. yes, no, no, sorry. No, 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 no. Centipede, an incredibly <laughs> poisonous you. centipede crawling on Marilyn's shoulder. But it doesn't seem like aggressive in any way. It just sort of like crawls and just kind of hangs out while she's talking to you. Fine. You really don't know what you did, do you? I know that no. we hit the floor real hard. You crushed a monument to a murderer. Okay. Is, is that is that not a good thing? That is alive. Oh. 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 You just dishonored something to praise them and may have damned a village near it. Who are who are th them? Soth. An emissary Sorry. of death. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Um, um. If how long until this gets noticed? Could we possibly? I'd I'd like to use primeval awareness mm -hmm. to sense dragons and undead. Mm -hmm. And since we're in the forest, which is my favorite terrain, can, mm -hmm. I w I'll sense it up to six miles at a distance. <laughs> to see if either of those are within six miles to answer this question in a much more concerning way. <laughs> so luck. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this place is absolutely teeming with them. Uh, oh, you detect God. two very different groups. A smaller group um, if I recall correctly, primeval awareness lets you know what's around, but not necessarily exactly where. Craig, if I'm if I'm correct, there's a bunch of different sensing mechanics, yeah. and I, I, I lose, I'm pretty sure it's that it's here, but not necessarily where. Yes, I can. I, you can just sense any. You don't reveal. I don't know their location. Just um, if they are present, yeah, a lot of undead sure. are within six miles of you, almost more than your brain can comprehend. It it kind of sends like a, a bit of a jolt through you because there's also a particularly powerful presence somewhere nearby but one thing kind of creeps through that a, that a different person might miss completely but because of your unique connection to the draconic world you detect it there's a very small dragon nearby Again, at you that, don't know exactly where, but you just feel it, its presence is much closer to you. At that, at that moment, when you ask the question and then Solok's eyes, like, 
close for a moment, they reopen and there's like reptilian pupils instead. And he starts looking around, but then his nose starts to bleed and you hear him just yelling out as he's overwhelmed with the presence that is nearby and probably sensing it. he didn't expect to have that much feedback come back and it's ah! soon they are closer than I thought why are you here they were fine I was going to wait and figure out what he was doing what is that and he's going to gesture towards the ship. That, that's what we crashed on. Um, yeah. We were on that when we crashed. Um, I'm really sorry. It's, yeah, it's there like, was a big fish. Yeah, it's like a ship that goes through the sky, but through the stars, but then it kind of landed. Uh, I mean, I landed it great, by this the is, way. This I, is the it, gif? It, this, this is, she's a human. She's oh, a human. she's a human. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. That's 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 all I can deal with. <laughs> <laughs> so I would would uh, would I don't know about like Silak, but the Sentry does look like a construct, right? I don't know if that's something that like Silak would. Uh, Silak uh, hasn't spoken with. to Sentry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Silak <laughs> thinks that there's a body of armor that's just there. That <laughs> nice. <just> okay. <laughs> okay. One, okay. One one quick point, uh, just of clarification for Sentry. I know you said you have this kind face. Does Sentry's face <laughs> articulate? Like when when they talk, does it move like a like a Not living really, face, or is no. it kind of a it's almost okay. worse? It's like the jaw. <laughs> <laughs> her mouth can open and close when she's eating, but like right. any other time, it's just yeah, blank. It's just a set right. into a, a feminine sort of expression, right? Like this soft yeah. uh, motherly expression. Right. Yeah. These um. So luck. I will. I will tell you also. The give me um a survival check. Uh, yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Seventeen. Um, again, I leave up to you in, in Solok's life if, he, if he's encountered people like this before, but you kind of have an innate sense. They're just not from around here, even from the way they're dressed. Like, you don't know what wizard tower they, they're, there's, are they part of the Red Dragon army? I, it's, it's like, what? Do you, do you serve the Red Dragon? Are you not even from Ansalan? From where now? <laughs> Ansalan. I'm from Get. Yeah, same. We're we we Geth. Have you heard of it? We're quite um, famous there. It is a silly place. <laughs> Why would you want to be famous from a silly place? But no. Yeah, we accidentally got famous in a silly place. Can you yeah. fight? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, well enough. Can you direct? <laughs> Um, direct, yeah. uh, what? And then he's going to walk closer away from the crowd mm -hmm. because these people will die if we don't move them soon, thanks to recent events. Oh, okay. uh, Miria, Miria, oh. Oh. you also <laughs> watched this flaming wreck come down from the sky. And as you have arrived at a different side of the clearing, you have gotten a much clearer view of exactly what has happened. And you know exactly what that means as the wreck of this ship lay in the ruins of the temple. You see this odd group of strangers, the villagers' faces, you know, largely irrelevant. These oddly dressed outsiders in Solok. Hmm. There is a moment where Miria, looking upon the destroyed chapel, just smiles. Ah, karma, wonderful. And then seeing Solak and these strangers and the ship, an idea starts to form on her face. And she clutches the thing that she came to the village to recover, a sort of ornate jewelry box. And she tucks it into her bag of holding and ties that up. 
I don't have many other options. And she will begin making her way over towards them. But will keeping the keeping her sort of hidden arm like under her cloak, she will raise her other hand up in sort of a non-threatening manner. Um, oh, you are muted, B Dave. <laughs> it's not a stream until it happens at least once. Yep. Um, <laughs> one bit of clarification: Where yeah. is Malleus? Uh, I would have uh, Malleus and my four servants uh, maybe hidden nearby somewhere in the tree line. Right. Nearby, out of sight. Yeah. Uh, Marilyn, I will say you detect this first. They're, they're not that. <laughs> the servants especially <laughs> are not. But Marilyn and probably Rust would see them easily. Well, Meryl, as Marilyn turns and does he heed your approach, what else does she detect in the woods nearby, Miriam? Uh, four skeletal warriors clad in armor with greatswords uh, sort of stood... Uh, sort of waiting for commands and you see this woman approaching with a hand up uh, miria notices first but solok you know miria as well as mm -hmm. she becomes approaching from the woods i mean no harm knight i know we have had our differences in the past differences in the past you tried to kill me and you, me, but we are in a different circumstance now, as I'm sure you are aware. Yes, you've you seen what they've done. Money. Are you still being paid? No, I am no longer in employment, if that's what you're asking. Not that money was ever my reward, but no. You know what they've done. We do not have much time. I know that you will want to discuss this further. Perhaps you won't trust me, but right now, I don't think you or these wonderful new guests understand what really has happened do they no good pleasure to meet you all darlings my name is miria you are in incredible danger a very powerful being is on their way here with a very powerful army and they will not be best pleased with what you've done you're a little late for that hmm Perhaps I can impress upon you how severe the consequences are if my good knight has not already done so. They will not just kill you. They will kill you, torture your souls, torture your bodies for eons. You will find no rest if this enemy finds us or captures you or kills you. This will not be a merciful, painless death. This will be a grievous, horrible, torturous existence for you and for all of these others. And she gestures at the villagers. You do uh, hear sort of a murmur going through the crowd. They're like, oh, Miria, Miria, Miria. And you see the woman, the blacksmith, that you know her name is Frida, Miria, sort of steps forward and she says, <laughs> hmm, I bow to the governor of these lands. Hmm? To what do we owe the pleasure of your visit this time, Miria? Well, I thought that I would assist in this little situation you seem to have found yourself in, Frida seems that the chapel of the Lord has been destroyed. Now, do you and your people want to live or do you want to die? Of course we want to live. We, 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 we will offer reparations to the Knight of the Black Rose. And you we... know that that will mean nothing. That will mean nothing. Gather your people, get your things. I need to have business with these people. You see, she runs off into the woods uh, with all of them. As you see, they she kind of claps her hands and just points, and you see where they how they scatter so quickly. These people have thought about an evacuation contingency before. It's just like, and they like <laughs> break. Why are you here, Solak? Because I knew Soth was coming, and I needed to see what he could do because someone has to stop them and do something about it. Someone that cares about more than coin. <laughs> ah, you still don't understand me. Well, regardless, um, these numbers, we won't be able to defeat him here. You know, you know how powerful he is. We won't be able to defeat him now. We need to, uh, we need to find somewhere to gather strength. Uh, he's coming in force, not just him, but with and with his army he is he is coming here it was a planned visit there is a large entourage on its way uh why the change i imagine that hmm? why the change of heart would you trust you that, let us just say that i have 
and she drops the cloak and you see that her entire I'm trying to remember which way around it is right hand I think uh, I always get this around her right hand up uh, all the way up into the sleeve you don't see where it ends is now fully skeletal um, and she just sort of holds it up and it still seems to be able to completely move let's just say that I've seen Soth's true colors and I have no intention of being one of his mindless servants I have no intention of working with him. I know you do not trust me. I do not ask you to, not yet. Nor do I ask the same of these travelers. But right now, he will at least be distracted by what has happened here. He will be enraged. And that may blind him to what else we do. You, and she points at Sentry, construct magic. What is your designation? What Do you have a, 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 a name, a, a Let designation? Let me just insert one yeah. quick thing before Sentry replies. As you all see, she holds up a fully articulated skeletal arm attached to what looks like a living elf body. How do you all react? What does Merylwen do when she sees this? <laughs> well, Merylwen has hung out with a lot of talkative skeletons beforehand. <laughs> so she's not, she's not too freaked out by like talking skeletons. She doesn't immediately think that it's definitely bad yeah. but she's like hmm she's not she's not a huge fan of like necromancy and she's like is this, this oh no that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well something happened with her her old cat um yeah like she's she's very like kind of has a has a funny thing about it so she's uh, she's met necromancers that she's kind of been fine with and like but she has to test the waters first so she's a little yeah. bit like on edge but like okay I'm siding with the dragon guy slightly here. <laughs> <laughs> Understand. And, and Rust, Rust on the Harbor. I think <clears throat> Rust on the Harbor is very much aware of the fact that he is in over his head right now. So I think he just sort of locks up and is like, uh, like that's another new thing. Um, <laughs> and I think he's going to wait for the dust to settle a little bit. He's just kind of like, just imagine he's getting gradually and gradually more like poofy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his ackles are just going up and up and Dear. up. Um, I he's, it, he's, he's probably feeling quite guilty right now, so he's sort of just a bit like, uh, <laughs> I'm going to wait till this dies down and I can ask a polite question that won't get me murdered. And last but certainly not least, Sentry. This, you, can, you can respond to the question afterwards, of course, but yeah. what, what's going through Sentry's head as she sees this? Sentry's Sentry's picking up on the vibes that there is something very bad coming our way. Um, so she's going to be on high alert, like her hand's going to be twitching over her lance and shield. Like she's going to be looking around, like trying to sense any danger that might be around. Um, but then she sees um, Maria come through with the skeletons and Sentry is not a fan of necromancy. So, <laughs> she, so she sees that and with all the other danger that's around, her eyes just sort of narrow and she looks at Mary and she's like, why would I, why would we tell you anything? Just because it makes it a bit easier for us to communicate if we're going to get out of here alive. But if you don't wish to answer, I suppose you don't have to. Uh, what if... Talk. Yes, it's a magical construct. Did you not pick up on that? No, I did not pick up on that. <laughs> Shame. Uh, uh, now, I'm almost certain that none of you are from Kreen, uh, judging by that ship and the look of you. So they you're not a Quillenost elf. No, I don't believe they're from our world, my dear knight. You, girl, you're not a Quillenost elf, but you are elven, yes? Yes. What is I, your uh... name? I, I'm Meryl Wen. Meryl Wen, very pretty name. Uh, uh, and your companion, this cat man? This is uh, Russ. Did you introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Rust on the Harbour. Properly, I'm called a Tabaxi. Ah, Tabaxi, how curious. Uh, I am Miria, Miria Erethrin. I was the, I am, I suppose, the governess of this town. But right now, we are. Not necessarily friends, but uh, your enemy is my enemy. This is, well, I'll let him introduce himself, but you've gained the uh, attention of one of the Knights of Solmania. She gestures to Solak. Solak, she talks a lot. Listen to her. <laughs> 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 when you say that, Solak, mm -hmm. you feel 
a jolt go through your soul is Tempest is afraid of something, or at least incredibly wary of something. And you all see the birds in the trees just start taking off near you. And a foul stench comes rolling in. And what looks like a procession of undead come. Hang on, produce. Okay, sorry. I got as my phone started ringing with one of our producers here, and I was like, "Well, something wrong." I'm like, "No, nope, pocket dial, no problem." Uh, <laughs> a, <laughs> you know, when you're streaming and the producer's calling, you're like, "I'm like, yeah. what did I just yeah, say?" I I don't, I don't, I'm like, <laughs> um, uh, "Foul stench rolls in." As you see, what looks like a procession of undead, Solok. You're used to seeing them as just mindless onrushing hordes, but they are arranged in columns. There's ghouls in the front, and then there's skeletal knights, ominously larger than the ones accompanying Miria. And behind them, you see a pale, decrepit figure whose flesh is worn and gaunt, but their eyes glow with a purple spectral flame and where they had hair is spectral flames. And they're carrying a banner that is worn and tattered, but has a black rose on it. When this person steps forward, which you, Miria, know is Worsten Karn. And she sort of tilts her head and says, Miria! Are the preparations made for our Lord's approach? Yes, of course, Banabera Khan, of course. There is some unexpected difficulties, but the procession is prepared. The villagers are all gathering their tribute. If you just wait just a moment, give us a few minutes, we will have everything ready. You see, she turns and eyes everyone else in the group, and she says, Are these tributes for our lord as well? Miria's eyes flicker to Solak for a second. Oh, his hand is gripping his bow like he's ready to shoot you twice in the chest. <laughs> no. does, Solak does not get context, so he's like, oh, we, we can trust you. Oh, you're a liar. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, these are mercenaries that I have hired to help with the preparations. There is just a few more things we need to do. And then Miriam will look back and is making a face at everyone gathered here. Like, do, like, you, do not engage. Like, she just shuttle, you, subtly shakes her head. You see, Captain Carstairs says, I wouldn't dream of speaking out of turn, but I'm thinking it might be time we got ourselves out of this place. I'll get the crew ready to move. And she just sort of like, slips out and runs back towards the ship. And you see Worsten Karn comes forward. She's not particularly big. She's only about 5'11 or so, but there is just death radiating off of her as she kind of comes forward. And she looks at your arm, Miria, and she says, I see our Lord has blessed you. Miri, as long as you cling to the flesh, you will never know your true power. Yes, quite the gift. Yes, I'm afraid that I'm still quite attached to the flesh for the moment, uh, Banabera. But um, just give us a few moments to prepare for the Lord's arrival, won't you? She sort of like looks at all of you and she just says, his arrival is imminent. I have no need to rush. I have eternity to serve our Lord. And she just kind of stamps the banner down and you see all of the undead just sort of rigidly stand at attention. And she kind of like looks at you, Miria, but just kind of like walks back <laughs> slightly. And she says, this will be a great day, Miria. I'm sure. Come, 
friends. We need to attend to the rest of the procession this way. And Miria will start making her way towards maybe the other end of the village, like getting <laughs> as far away from these guys as possible, like the, the banner bearer, the Western Cairn. When you very much start moving and you see she just kind of watches as you do from within the trees comes a voice raised in an eerie song, a deep, broken lament. The voice carries as much pain as the words of the song, speaking of night in blood, in moonlight, in passion, in never ending pain and as you do hear all of this the undead start to part and behind them you all see a horrifying figure what was probably once a man a giant of a man six foot ten wrapped in metal that is worn and faded. There is a tabard that was probably once blight, bright and colorful, worn down to a black rose on his chest. He has a heavy pot helm with a faded purple plume out of the top of it, and glowing red eyes emanate from the darkness. Lord Soth stands before you. And he stalks forward in the undead stop and begin bowing down to him and as she bows you see Worston turns and looks at you Miria as they're all bowing Miria is frozen in fear for the first like she's just looking at Soth and just looks terrified does she bow I don't think I don't think she does because I think that she is just remembering what has just happened and does not bow you all see Soth stalks forward and begins walking past you and looks over and looks at the temple that is a wreck and turns and looks back right at you, Maria. And it's like he's looking into your soul and his head just kind of cocks, but he doesn't say anything as he just stares. I, what do you want, Lord? Everything is prepared for you. She just holds the hand close to her. You see, he turns and looks back towards the temple and looks down at all of you and just says, Kill them all in the undead. Ah! Come rushing forward in all of you roll initiative. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is cool. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me add Sola <laughs> and Miria to initiative. Oh, that's a good noise. All right. How did uh, Russ do, oh. Joey? Well, I rolled a one, but with. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rust. Rust, you're not going last in the first round. You're going first in the second round. That's, uh, that's how you, <laughs> that's what you think of it. <laughs> uh, Meryl one? Uh, seven altogether. I rolled a two. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to say enough time has passed. Well, actually, what's the time on Bless? Uh, like I think a, it's like an hour. Minute. It's an hour. Hmm. I'm going to say it's been more than an also hour for the time it yeah. took to crash and all this to happen. So we'll say Bless is yeah. worn off. Uh, Sentry? Uh, 16. 16. Perfect. Rust with a fat one. I appreciate you playing the game on hard mode. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Solok? 16. 16. Um, I assume Solok's got a higher dexterity than Sentry. We just, we've established Sentry's not yeah. particularly dexterous. Yeah. Um, she ain't I'll, quick. <laughs> uh, technically, you'll act simultaneously, but we'll, we'll let uh, Solok declare first. And last, but certainly not least, Miria. 12. All right, let's see your enemies. There's one of my decent rolls. Okay, perfect. Um, however, Solok, you will get to go first. Again, paint the scene. You are in a clearing. The ship has crashed into the 
chapel, we'll say um, at the north end of the clearing, up at the top. The zombies are coming up from the south. Uh, Soth has walked out and is into the clearing, actually not terribly far from you. But when he just said, kill them all, it's like he's just looking at the temple. It's like he's not even paying attention to you, even though he's standing right there. Uh, yeah. But these legions of ghouls and skeletons and skeletal knights are all charging forward. You notice as they're all rushing and hissing, Worston Karn is just kind of casually strolling up, <laughs> holding uh, holding the banner. Uh, but it is your turn, Solok. And the townsfolk are generally on our side between, like, near, like, away from the undead or the undead? Yeah, they ran away, the, right? They... The townsfolk kind of scattered towards the town. Yeah. We'll say, uh, for our purposes, we'll say the, the town is east. It's towards three o'clock. So we'll say the ship is 12, the town is three, the undead are at six. Myria came from nine. <laughs> so in a, an important clarification, mm -hmm. are the undead only going towards us or are they also going towards the town? As far as you can tell, they're only coming towards you. But you know, Solok, there are legions of undead around. Way more than you can see right now. Because yeah. you felt it with your primeval sense. Yeah. Even though there, there's only about a dozen in front of you, you know there are many more. In Miria, you especially know soft doesn't roll light. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, Solok pulls his bow, pulls an arrow out, aims towards the sky uh and in draconic again is going to say gift of wind and he's going to fire an arrow up to land it right in front of the legion of undead uh he's going to look at the party and tell we need to move now and i'm going to cast wind wall so a 50 foot long wall of wind 15 feet high in front of the undead excellent Hang on, let me just look I'm at big, exactly I'm a big how. Kind of oh, it's great. <laughs> nice. It's great. Uh, they can make a strength save to try and go through it, correct? Yep. It just they'll get beat D8, up. 3D8 bludgeoning on a failed or half one of those save. Um, you can shape it. So is it just a wall wall or any, anything else? I'm going to try to shape it almost like kind of like curved. So it's like a C towards us. So Got that it. we can basically go this way a little bit more to just move as far away as possible perfect i'm just reading ring wall real quick to make sure That's i fine. got it i got it right in my head yep boom, 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 boom. perfect uh this wall springs to life you see it looks like the undead have every intent of passing through it so uh be ready to roll that damage Deal. uh but anything else from solok solok is gonna start running he does perfect. not know these people and miriam sucks <laughs> <laughs> which direction Miriam. are you headed towards Miriam. the ship he doesn't know your name <laughs> towards, towards the ship which is basically 12 o'clock or towards the town which is 3 o'clock or towards the open woods which is 9 o'clock towards the open woods the ship has soft the town has soon to be dead sad people uh, <laughs> the forest has trees and I can climb and I assume Catman can climb the <laughs> statue person scares me a little bit but there's green coming out of them <laughs> so like chances are four sounds good perfect so you've you've activated the wind wall solox yeah. clearing out sentry your turn yep sentry's gonna make like a tree and leave um <laughs> hey! i appreciate that everybody realizes it's f this o'clock right yeah mm -hmm. but um before i go i'm gonna pop um aura of vitality so any creature that's in a 30 foot radius of me will i can um, give them 2d6 healing as a bonus bonus action nice perfect i think the only well actually everybody but solok is currently injured uh mary is not but rust was and Miria still wasn't at 100 and you yourself weren't so i guess go ahead and roll that healing cool nice. i will give 2d6 bam, bada, bam, bam, bam. i got an eight on my d6 who are you gonna give it to i will give it to I'll give it to um, Merylwyn. Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll head towards the forest, yeah, following this... the person who knows what's happening. <laughs> uh, what, what, is, what, is it, what does your aura of vitality look like? Again, it's all very, like, golden, but it's more like a golden, like, pulse bubble kind of thing that, like, pulses out from, like, the ground and then 
goes up over her in like this golden aura bubble and anyone in that gets the healing uh solok having seen this construct do this overt holy motion uh, how does solok feel about this Solok think this person is a god from the sky <laughs> <laughs> they are a moving suit of armor and just create light out of their body and can speak without their mouth moving it makes no sense to me <laughs> but it's Mary. cool Miria, this holy energy washes over you too, and it really kind of sucks. How does Miria feel about all of this? Yeah, I think she like grips the skeletal arm like it, it like somewhat hurts, but like she kind of like looks over and there is a it's like a raised eyebrow as like a mm, interesting kind of uh notion. Like mm, unexpected. Perfect. The oh. undead. Oh, that was close. Uh, the undead are going to charge through the wind wall. Uh, and what is your save DC, Solok? Um, that is 16. Uh, you see the skeletons uh, in the ghouls very much get buffeted on their way through. The skeletal knights seem like they just put their shields in front of them and pass through and you see Worston Karn walks through like this is nothing yeah. like just the the tabard kind of like blows in the wind as she as she comes through it uh go ahead and give me that damage that's uh 22 on a fail 11 on a save perfect yeah an eight so, and a six Jeez. The, to be clear right now of what you are up against is there are Four knights, ten skeletons, ten zombies, four ghouls, and Worston Karn uh, is what is four on the knights, field. Ten Here, skeletons. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna put it in chat. Ten ghouls. Uh, okay, great. Ten ghouls. That was it. Four ghouls. Four skeletons. Oh, oh, wait, oh sorry. ten zombies. Wait, um, I tried to send it all. I think it. Yeah, four sorry. skeletal knights, ten skeletons, ten zombies, four ghouls. Nope. Yep. That's it. Okay. And Worston um, Karn. Uh, however, that was twenty-two points. You say. Yep. All right. I, again, uh, to Mark's previous point, I have all the tabs open. Um, <laughs> you, the wall completely shatters the skeletons as they just kind of enter it, <laughs> kind of fall to pieces, being blown around in all directions. Um, the knights are more than fine. Um, the ghouls uh, also, you see chunks are kind of ripped into their undead flesh but they just kind of keep coming forward through it and it is now their turn so we're gonna go down we can go down the list here so um what's your movement solok 35 uh you are fast enough that you could have gotten away from the knights however they know your face two of them yes, um sir are going to start hurling throwing axes at you, Solok, as you I like go. This. Uh, what is your AC currently? 16. Um, that is going to be two hits. Uh, would it, three, would, four hits. Huh, sorry, would, go ahead. Would 21 negate any of that? Yes. Um, I'm going to use my reaction to use protective wings from my gift of the metallic dragon. So these metallic dragon wings will almost like sprout out of Solok's back and try to buff away some of the throwing axes. You see these skeletons move shockingly quickly to everybody but Miriam, uh, Miriam throwing these wings and Solok without turning around comes up around him and all of the axes just fall off of it. And Worston Karn just kind of turns her head and looks at you and says, I will deliver your heart to our Lord, Solak. You will not escape me. You need more sun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two more of the knights. One is going to attack Merwin. Yeah. Uh, Merwin, what's your AC currently? It's 13 now. <laughs> oh, no. And that's, nice. that is actually enough now. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it. he comes, it draws a sword, which you see has a sickly green glow to it, Marilyn. 
is you know it attacks you <laughs> twice for a grand total of 30 points of necrotic damage and you cannot heal hit points this turn you feel as the sword uh. bites into you it is like it is taking your life essence away with every strike Ow. dang it rust uh actually kind of doesn't matter what's your ac rust is definitely going to hit you at least twice uh, <laughs> same thing rust 30 points of damage that cannot be healed uh, this round is you are aware that it is taking the life out of you um, when it's attacking. Uh, the ghouls are um, far less effective. Let's see here. Uh, ooh, We're doing Maria. great, though. Well, it's a whole it's a whole army, you know. Um, Miria, yes. Uh, you are going to get slashed four times okay. for a total of twenty eight points of damage. Do you need to know my AC, or are you just is that uh, just I take that? I roll pretty dang high, but sorry. Well, what is your AC? Sorry, 18. I apologize. Uh, that uh, that is going to because get because I can AC. shield it as well. What can That's your shield get it up to? 23. Um, your shield will negate all of it if you put your shield up. That's what she would do. She would not want to <laughs> get hit by these things, so she just uh, it, creates a your, barrier. What does your shield look like when it springs in? Uh, so with a kind of flick of her wrists and she just utters a word in uh, sort of an arcane language, uh, the equivalent of shield. Uh, <laughs> I'm not very good at making up things on the, on the fly, uh, but she kind of flicks her wrist and this kind of green... Um, series of green sigils, like very Doctor Strange, like disc, kind of uh, uh, arrives in front of her, and she kind of holds it like a barrier in front of her. We truly doing... are anime rivals. It's you're, you... <laughs> <laughs> you're doing, you're doing yeah. great, honey. Uh, yeah. You, Miria, your wrong? shield springs to life as the ghouls pound against it, and you all see the skeletons um, beating on it as well. And Worston Karn uh, walks towards you, Miria, and she just says. You have betrayed us, Miria. Your lord, your master betrayed me first, you wretched banshee. Banshee. I wonder if Lord Soth will let me keep you as a pet. And you see her jaw just unhooks and a horrific scream comes out of her important point of clarification sentry are mm -hmm. you high enough level that your aura makes people immune to fear yes also it's in 30 feet of me uh does your armor grant an ac boost or your it does. uh uh, I don't know if everybody was accounting for that AC boost, so we have to factor that in next time. Uh, oh, not, so, oh, not everybody gets an AC boost. Oh, my, ar my armor gives me an AC boost. Yeah, perfect. The aura just uh, adds uh, saving throws and immune to fear, right? I think. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I need a wisdom save. Uh, what does your aura add to that? I'm from from all of you, even you, uh, Solok. You're you're still within range of this as she's okay. screaming. Uh, charisma mod, I think, isn't it? Essentially, yes, yeah, a plus three. Pro so wisdom with a plus three. 19. 19? Ooh, uh, 28. 28. Hey. So, <laughs> so I have happy. advantage on wisdom saving throws, and I nat 20 on my wisdom saving throw on both rolls. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, get those out of the way early. Get those out of the way we'll, early. Right. Will never happen uh, again. Uh, okay. Rust, what, what did Rust get? Uh, 19. Oh, sorry, and I, I'm thinking I'm missing somebody. Sentry, it's did you me, say? It's me. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm 16. Uh, 16 is exactly what you needed, um, oh. Marilyn. It's like you feel yourself kind of like giving in to hopelessness and despair from this scream, and as you kind of take a step back a little closer to Sentry, there's just something about her that just sort of helps you stand a little taller. As this, and all of you just hold. And you see a moment later, her jaw just hooks back up. And she says, oh, stronger than I thought. 
Miria, I will bless you with a warrior's death. And she brings the banner pike around to attack you, Miria. Your AC, AC is still, still, still 21. Still 23, yep. Oh, 23, the shield yeah. is still yep. up. Um, unfortunately, she is still going to get through twice. Okay. As you see, she... <laughs> And it crashes through and stabs this pike into Miria. Uh, it does 20 points of piercing mm -hmm. in 26 points of necrotic, not counting any mitigation you might have. I have some, I am resistant to necrotic. So that was 20 points 13. of piercing and yep. 13. 20, so, it'll be 20 and 13 uh, then. Yep. So, uh, uh, so 33. Give me a charisma save, Miria. Oh, uh, I would still get a uh, sentries bonus, right, Ree? You do. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, it's oh, that's not very good. Uh, total of eight. Miria, as she stabs this into you, you hear this horrific chuckle of like, <laughs> as a searing pain moves through the wound, as you are cursed. Black, oh, thorny rose stems start sprouting out of your body, and you will have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls, and your speed is halved. You all see, basically, these nasty, thorny roses come out, and some of them come out of her legs and just bite into the ground. It's worse than just like... <laughs> However, uh, it is now your turn, Miria. So I think Miria sort of holding, like, kind of holding the shield still, Spill, but we'll look at uh, Ken and just say, you get your power from a half-dead knight who betrayed everything that was good about him for his own selfish indulgences. You'll get what's coming to you, Banshee. Uh, and I will use my, I'm going to do a, a number of things. The first thing I'm going to use is my bonus action to use my Blessing of Nutari uh, mm -hmm. to teleport 30 feet away. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the this is the Blessing of the Raven Queen reflavored, but I'm going to teleport 30 feet away towards the forest. Mm -hmm. um, it also means that uh, Myriad becomes almost uh, surrounded in sort of green runes and sigil, or like uh, moon-like sigils, green moon-like sigils, because I gain uh, resistance to all damage until the start of my next turn. Uh, and then the there was two knights attacking Merylwyn, right? There were two knights like attacking her, and Merylwyn were, looks pretty injured. She does. All right, so I'm gonna <laughs> then turn around, point at one of them, and uh, this is my command uh, undead action. I need it to make a charisma saving throw, and I need to know what its intelligence is as well, because if it has certain intelligence, it gets advantage, and it's uh, the duration's affected. The skeletal knights have an intelligence of thirteen. Okay, so they have advantage on the saving throw, and they can repeat it every hour. Uh, but it's DC 18. Uh, it is not terribly uh, charismatic. I got a 17 on the die, but it has no bonuses, so it All fails right. the save. So, uh, Command Undead, this thing is basically now under my command for an hour. It can repeat the saving throw every turn, and then mm -hmm. I can immediately just issue it like a free command uh, mm -hmm. as part of that. And I mm -hmm. will say, I made you turn on the other one. Let the girl go. Uh, and I'll command it to attack the other knight that it's currently engaged with. Um, try and buy Meryl once in time. Yep, it very much turns and starts crashing on the one that was attacking Rust. Yep. Yep. And then I will basically uh, use the half speed movement speed I have to continue running away. <laughs> Solok, Miria appears basically right next to you and begins trying to hightail it, but it is clear that she's in bad shape as these rose stems are sprouting out of her. Is Solok going to help? Or are you just going to be like, that's real rough and let her off the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> a yes, is... you're going to help, or yes, you're not going to help. <laughs> I mean, that was just a yes. I mean, yeah. What? Hey, talking is a free action. As you see Miria appear and is clearly wounded and struggling, what, if anything, does Solok say before you help? Swear on what's left of your life that you mean this. She kind of just looks at him exasperated like she's suffering with this pain. And she's just like, I swear on whatever you want me to, darling. I mean this. He betrayed me. He tried to kill me, put me under his command. And that is one thing I will never do. 
I'm my own woman, and I have my own ambitions. I mean this. If you betray me, I'll do worse than he did. Uh, so I'll, I'll help her. Yeah. Solok sort of hooks hooks an arm under your waist. She is now yeah. covered in thorns, but yeah. kind of can help her move a little faster towards the forest. Merylwyn, uh, mm-hmm. again, the uh, the wall is slowing the undead down, but they are continuing to just proceed through it. The skeletal knight that was uh, attacking you is now engaged in attacking the one that attacks Rust. And you still see this huge knight just standing there looking in the ruin of the chapel, but completely ignoring you as the two locals have already fled. And Sentry also is heading towards the woods. Um. Right, yeah. I, I'm like, I think we're not from around here, so I think we should do what they're doing. And I'm guessing I'm right next to Rust. You are? Um, so what I would like to do is I'd like to pull out my rather fancy looking bow, grab onto Rust, and shoot an arrow into the forest where it will uh, teleport us um, and get us out of danger because I just need to get out of there. Perfect. Um Go ahead and roll for me, just on the off chance you get a one. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. You know, like, yeah, it's okay. Surely you can hit the broad side of a tree. Surely. I got a six. With a six. <laughs> I could, it's 11. Uh, you remember the Demon Slayer Mugen Train when uh, Tanjiro just throws a sword and it's just <laughs> <laughs> off, 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 into nothing there? Um I would say that is a success, Miria, but you don't land it like particularly deep into the woods. Just and as you appear up on the tree branch, you see this small death dragon just sort of like hunched up on the branches and looks at you and says something in that strange language again. It's clearly talking to you, but it's you, Solak and Miria here, run, you fools. If my mother dies because of you, I will make a nest in your skull. You know that moment where someone's like... (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. Rest. Uh, Well, anything else from Marilyn? Uh, no, she's just glad to be out of there right now for the time Rest, being. I think just start, start legging it. She shoots the arrow, I'm gonna say, grabs Rust by the tail, and, <laughs> and then you're just <laughs> over there, Rust. Um. So, uh, yeah, if, well, if I'm so if I'm up a tree and there's this thing that I've never seen before in my life talking to me in a language I do not understand, I feel like Rust takes a moment, just kind of like. Cuff, cuff, adjust the cravat, and then <laughs> like, <laughs> he's gone. He's further into the forest. Like, thank you, Marilyn. Yeah. He's he's out of there. Do you out of there. see as you are running? You see the cast or the crew rather of uh, the Far Star is also um, coming and running out as well. And you see Soth is standing there and sort of like looks out of the corner of his eye and just like motions his hand and a huge purple fireball goes flying towards right, right towards the crew, (laughs) consuming half of them. I knew I shouldn't have signed up for the loan. And they all fall to the ground, bones burned. And with no time to even scream as they lay there for a moment, Maria, you know exactly what's about to happen. As the bones begin to twitch and stand back up again, in turn and look as the face of the dead crew's eyes light up with an undead purple flame. And that is a good place for us to stop. (laughs) I love seeing the people who haven't played with B-Day before. (laughs) Yeah. Just yeah. seeing their reactions to stuff. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, wow. He's like, yeah, they're hitting him with a fireball. Yeah, they're going to die, but there's always something worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's a uh, you know fun 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 fact uh the first episode of the black dice society also began with lord soth showing up and blowing some stuff up with yep. his giant fireball so we're all we're on we're on brand here folks we're on brand mm-hmm. yeah. but mm-hmm. uh, how many days were they from retirement <laughs> <laughs> oh he'd already bought the boat Rest. Yeah, he'd already bought yeah. the, the, the lift forever. Yeah, one like, last oh. job, one exactly. last ride. He's waiting for me in the rock of brawl, and I'm gonna sail <laughs> off into the sunset. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. We have to, yeah. We had, like Soft's new last name is Mendoza now. So you can just go Mendoza. Mendoza. <laughs> uh, few things we got to wrap up now, which is the results of the giveaway. So, um, producer V, is there anything I have to do, or is it already all done here? No, oh, where they have to. They, it's all okay. Hang on, reading is fundamental. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, I love the like that we can hear the the voice behind the the ethereal mm-hmm. plane and B Dave mm-hmm. that B Dave's talking to, and everyone else is just like B Dave's like, can I do this? Okay, yeah, great. And then he just replies, <laughs> we hear the sort of like uh, it's, yeah. it's in the document, B Dave. Like it's all I, there. I, I apologize that first of all, you all should see this document. It is voluminous. Thank you very much. I'm kind of spinning a lot of plates right now, but there is one thing I overlooked. Sentry. Hello. As the fireball explodes and these undead begin to rise and you see the remaining crew just kind of looking shocked as both Solok and Mary are staring on, having expected this all too much. Right next to you, you see that child. Hmm. This is a fascinating place. Sentry, I would like you to live. I, I would like you to do the opposite. <sighs> you don't have to thank me yet. And Hadar reaches out and touches you. And although you all don't see the child, you do see Sentry's arms begin to grow and ripple and expand down into huge black tentacles as oh. voted on by the players of Idle Champions. Sentry has been blessed by Hadar with greatly enhanced strength. Oh, that's really cool! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> so that is all the votes that you all were in a collision, that you were eating when it happens, that you were transporting livestock, that Sentry <laughs> would encounter a great enemy, be blessed by strength, and you would have a collision with a tyrant ship. Uh, again, stream code Sentry Black Rose. Uh, and let's get to the giveaways here. Okay, so. WizKids giveaway winners is Gen C Defend. Sorry if I said that wrong. Gen C oh, Defend. Gen C Defend. DMT, Icons of the Realm, Draconian Warband, Dragon Army Warband, and Kalamon Military Warband. I got them over there and I was going to show it to you, but every time I do this, it's just a shiny plastic reflection. So <laughs> trust me, it's dope. You'll be very happy with it. Uh, the Solox Arrival Collection is with uh, Daiki Monk, Daiki nice. underscore Monk, Dragonlance Solox theme pack, High Rollers Dragonlance skin bundle, Ox Venture Dragonlance skin bundle, Knights of Takesis bundles, pinky up there. Use code DRAGONSLAY at D&D Mini for 10% off your next order. Thank you to WizKids. That expires March 31st. The Paladin dice set. Uh, Sentry, if you would, Ooh. show that again to us there. Oh, of course. Uh, is it, Gorgeous, ooh, look at this. Ah, ooh, uh, Rai Jin is the winner there. Rai Jin. Oh, uh, again, special thanks to V and Jake for producing. And I'm not going to tell y'all which one of them ooh. called me in the middle of it, but it took like a week off my life, a heart attack. That's cool. That's fine. <laughs> um, thank you to Jay and Jordan for moderating. Thank you to Ellen, Gabe, Johnny, Mark, and Rhiannon for bringing their characters to Idol Champions Presents. It's always weird because it's written in here to thank me for dungeon mastering, but that seems disingenuous. Thanks, to thank thank you to thank you, 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 Misty, the Willow Wisp Familiar, designed by my dear friend Alicia Marie, uh, is still available. Net proceeds from the first week of sales will go out to the BIPOC Support Foundation. Don't forget to purchase her today before the event ends. Solok is coming to Idol Champions on Wednesday. You can have him and his voluminous entourage of dragons join your formation. Um, the Heroes of Erois and Ox Ventures Dragonlands bundles are available now. We will see you at 10 a.m. next Monday, February 27th, for 
for episode two for Fury of the Black Rose. I mean, we had spaceship crashes, we had fireballs, undeath, black tentacles, you know, there's nowhere to go but up. Uh, and you can also catch the rebroadcast of this very show at 4 p.m. today. Until next time, thank you all so much, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.